Wow, what a morning. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to How to Trade, formerly known as The Midday Show. That girl right there on International Women's Day in the baby blue is Adara. I am Sharif, and we're gonna wait for everyone to migrate on over from the other stream. We already have Chase Bands. I love that name. Uh, you're not late to the party, my friend. You are just getting started. We got Darwin, we got Billy Turner, we got Step, Roger Ortega, we got Matt, we got Trader Forever, and Aaron and Joanna Brewster, Igor, Andrew, Mr. Dang Longshorts, we got Pedro Khan, Ponzi Fonzi, Naps, Sofa Monster, I see you there, boy. We got Big Adam Deleuze, Big Kyle Burdett, what's up, my man? Elon, we got Jordan, we got Steven, we got Ryan, Cyril Maroon 5, Juan, Ralph Woodward, and Jimmy J. I like that. I like when uh, names have uh, a nice ring to them. Good morning, Adara. Good morning. How are you today? I'm all right, you know, I'm chilling. Uh, hopefully a better day than yesterday, and I'm Excited for the weekend. It's Friday, baby. It's Friday. How are you? I yeah. I want to echo everything you just said as well too, so, right? Like I think it's certainly a lot. Yesterday was a little bit rough for me, but you know what? There's only literally the only way we can go from yesterday is up. So right? that's what we're gonna try to do. We're gonna try to make smarter decisions. We're gonna try to make smarter trades. I'm very happy to be here and also very excited for the weekend. So yes. What likewise. have you been looking at? I know you had a trade earlier. I did. I can talk about this small cap capper PBM. Just a cool, you know, a regular. 204%. Let's zoom out because there was a reason I got into this trade. So three rules, because I always said they were two, but they were three. You need a definable pre-market high. That's the one that I always left out there for small cap cappers. And then you've got to break through that definable pre-market high after the bell at 930, and you got to be trading at VWAP. So I waited for this bad boy to uh, break through the pre-market high, which was just chilling there at like 319, 318. We took the 320 break with a nice move and we took that move up into 360. So that was the only trade we've had on the small cap gappers. I've got another trade right now setting up on AAPL. I wanna defend this top over here. So we had uh, a bit of a top high on Apple at these levels over here. Uh, this was in the pre-market, this 170.50, VWAP's at 170.60. If Apple makes its way back into this area over here, I wanna get long on AAPL, looking uh, to defend that level. We'll see if we get that opportunity today. But the market is on the way down, so we need to be cognizant of this 18.3 level. We already bounced guys off 18.3 right at the bell there uh, at 9.30 when uh, when everything uh, got started on the day. And then Huadun, or sorry, Huaboom went the dynamite, baby, through into all-time highs yet again. 18, four, three, six and a half on uh, the NQ March contract. Uh, trying to stay positive right now. Uh, Greensville is on the north side of 18316. So we got to stay above 18316 to stay green on the day, but it's going to be that 183 that I've got my eyes peeled on, baby, because we got to hold that level if we want to continue to pump up here on the future. Probably precipitated mostly by this giant quadunk here on NVDA 974, the high. This one dipped with aggression, Adara, into that 932 area. It's, it's moving dollars at a time right now. Okay, it's bouncing up into 37, coming down into 34. This thing is an absolute monster. It's still positive on the day, 1.18%, well above pivots. It did, in fact, actually break resistance level one of pivots. So we're gonna keep our eye on NVIDIA for any mean reversion longs here, uh, perhaps that may set up. But it looks like Apple doesn't wanna make its way down into that 170 and a half level, Adair. It's doing these uh, wicking bottoms and curling up the roundy bottom or oh, yeah. the smiley face as the NOS, the boss, likes to say. It's coming into that 171 and a half right now. Looking awfully strong right now, AAPO. Yeah, Apple's certainly doing the roundy face, um, as was right? said in this show. Yeah, I think it's a really nice look, really nice recovery there. Congrats to Daryl Flint and everybody else in the chat shorting NVIDIA. Daryl Flint saying, I'm short NVIDIA at 943, here we go. Then about 10 messages later, uh, saying, got, just got out a piece out at 933 on NVIDIA. So very quick nice. movement there. Congrats to you, Daryl Flint. Congrats to anybody else involved in this name. Seems like Kyle Burdett also might be involved based on what I'm seeing here for that NVIDIA nice. short. So congrats, shout out to everybody here. Someone was saying, what does NVIDIA puts mean? So that means as options. So put is gonna be when you're uh, betting to the short side and then calls are when you're betting to the long side. So basically it means they're short NVIDIA in the option sense. 
Also, I am uh, plot twist of the century here in this Friday. I'm involved in a small capper. But the reason for this is this one is so rangy. It's so rangy. I like these slightly higher lows as well. I got involved here. I'm trying to build this position. Got involved at 270s because it looked like we were curling up. I have a resting order set here at that six four six. To, sorry, 264 area, that would be um, fabulous. Oh, we just got filled there, perfect. Uh, if we break decisively below that 256, 255 area, I'm gonna have to say au revoir. And basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to piece it out as we get to the top of this range. That's the goal here. I think we have at least until that 280 area. This is a very different kind of trade for me, so I'm gonna be monitoring it very carefully. It will be my child. We will be babysitting it, braiding its hair, and <laughs> hoping for it to grow to the upside here. So that's the look on the AIMD. I know medical, also we're Worth noting this is what makes me kind of nervous about this one we have an 800,000 share float so baby float but I think given the float uh, how well it's respecting a range to me is, is pretty shocking and it's actually been pretty calm all day except for this one little halt earlier here at uh Oh, this can't be a halt. It was 9:10. But yeah, so um, so nice look here for for Inos Medical. Going to be watching over it, but I'm happy right now. Please just punch. Also, Joanna Brewster would like a dollar club for uh, her two dollar club on the Tesla short. You get double the hit there. Uh, when you get a two dollar winner, you get it hit it twice. You get a dollar winner. We're going to hit it once for you. All right, we got we got super chats coming in, baby. Chase bands. $2 super chat. Happy Friday, team chat. Let's go. Shout out to you, my man. I hope you're printing. Big Kyle Burdett. Shout out, my man. $5 super chat. Dump it. Dump it. All Tesla. Spy. NVIDIA. Woo. He goes on to say, all right, there's your nature boy. Woo of the day, baby. Shout out to Big Kyle Brudet, the perma bear in, uh, in a print factory session, I guess, today on the day. So shout out to him. He had a big boy day yesterday and we're pleased as punch for him. All right, we're going to set up the lesson. Uh, just doing that right now, Ram Ram. As we're talking about minimizing risk while short selling, uh, maybe we could have started this, uh, uh, started the lesson on short selling with, uh, with risk management, but we included risk management into every lesson. I did that on purpose to make sure that uh, we were covered on that base, but we're gonna spend an entire day on it today. So short selling, as probably everybody already knows, carries inherent risk with it more than going long on a position, managing, or sorry, making risk management a crucial aspect of the short selling strategy here are five key approaches that we're going to talk about to minimize risk while shorting so the first one is utilizing obviously stop loss orders this kind of goes without saying but we got to cover these bases these are for people well for people that don't know what a stop loss is these are orders that automatically exit your position if the stock price reaches a predefined level this helps obviously limit your potential losses if the price unexpectedly in this case rises against your prediction because we're predicting that it's going to go down right because it's short um, I have to just manage this position quickly here on AMZN because if Amazon breaks through this 50 cent area that's the end of my trade for this one we're looking for this area here the IB high on AMZN to hold if it doesn't hold at around 177 50 ish that's going to be the end of my trade I'm gonna have to draw a line in the sand there but it is putting in lower highs and lower lows so we'll, get, we'll see what we get I'm just make sure my stop is in place on this one before I look and yes we're good to go with the stop in place on there so you everything okay Katina man uh, NVIDIA Woo! broke 920 guys Katina man was uh, pointing that out so anybody long NVIDIA be careful here at these levels. It's on the way down. It just broke through pivots. And it looks like we're going to get stopped out of AMZN here as the market is coming down, but it didn't quite pass my level. We're waiting on the other side of 50s. So Amazon on the way down as well. We'll see if we get triggered. Not yeah. like actually triggered, like as in, like, you know, not that kind of triggered. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <I'll> lie. Right? <laughs> so uh, talking about stop loss orders, uh, the placement of your stop losses as well, super important. I, am I going to get out of uh, Amazon here? Sorry, I got to keep, uh, I got to I gotta look here because it's at my level and it's not triggering. So just got to stop the level, uh, lesson for a sec to see if we, what's going on here? All right. So we didn't cross, I guess. That's probably why. Because my order is active. So that's weird. 
stop loss placement, super important as well. So you're looking to set up your stops above a recent swing high or a short term resistance level. So not just the fact that we're using stops, but stop placement when you're taking a short or short sell position, very crucial. So you're looking to place it above a recent swing high, so above a crest, a predefined high that you can see, or short term resistance level, something horizontal on the chart that's obviously been rejected off multiple times. You can see the price action come in, for example, into 179 on uh, Apple and then reject. It doesn't want to break through that uh, 180 uh, ish area. I'm going to have to get out here. All right, so that's it. We take an L on that Amazon long. That's okay. We'll keep going. All right. And so that is the important part there. Stop using stops and stop placement. Then you need to maintain your position size discipline, right? So you're, you should really be looking to allocate a smaller portion per trade uh, than you would for a long in the case of short selling. So allocate only a smaller or whatever predefined portion of your capital to each short position. This strategy helps limit the overall impact on your portfolio if the trade goes against you and consider using a fixed percentage of your capital per position on or, uh, or per short position um, or adjust using a dynamic approach if you want uh, based upon your perceived risk on the instrument. What do I mean by that? So you could say, all right, for small cap gappers, if I wanna take a small cap gapper low float short, I'll never use more than 1% of my capital. But if I wanna take, say, a mag seven name short, I can use two and a half percent. So you can allocate risk uh, on a predefined basis irrespective of the instrument you're trading, or you can try to look at, say, okay, well, a small cap gapper, a little bit riskier than taking a mag seven name short, so I'll allocate less to a small cap gapper short float than I will to a mag seven name. Up to you, just make sure that you're consistent in doing it. And conduct thorough research, right? You have to conduct thorough research when you take a short position uh, because you need to know what could happen to make the position go against you. So analyze the company's fundamentals to identify potential weaknesses that could justify a price decline. This includes financial statements, for example, uh, the analyzing the competitive landscape to see who could take away business or market share from that company. Look at the management team. Are they up to snuff or is there uh, you know, rumors about the management team uh, rolling heads? And look at the industry trends. Like for example, microchips are in vogue right now. You know semis are in vogue, but when you may look at solar or look at electric vehicles, not so much. So you need to understand the industry and the, and the sorry, not the industry trend. Yeah, the industry trends, what's in vogue at the moment and evaluate market conditions, right? So are we trending up or are we sideways? Or are we moving down on these indices, right? So uh, evaluate the market conditions to understand the broader economic factors, the sector performance, and the potential news catalyst that could impact your stock. And obviously goes without saying, you should be combining this with technical analysis uh, to identify potential entry and exit points on historical price and volume data. So it goes without saying, obviously we're gonna be using some TA here. But be mindful of the costs and fees. It is not the same to short something as it is to go long. You have to borrow the shares that you are shorting. That's gonna cost you some money. So short selling involves borrowing shares from a broker, which incurs borrowing costs as well as some fees. These costs and these fees eat into your potential profits. So factor them, make sure to factor them in your calculations and compare borrowing rates between different brokers to find the most favorable terms. So we know there are brokers out there that specialize in short selling because they make more, uh, more instruments available to you uh, for shorting. But that's not the only thing we need to consider when we're looking for a, a sell side broker. We need to see how much they're gonna charge us because at the end of the day, it's, about, it's a dollars and cents kind of equation, right? So that's what we look for there. So be mindful of the costs and mindful of the fees if you are gonna be looking to go short. There are more costs involved with shorting than there are with going long, all right? And you have to understand the nature of a short squeeze. What the hell is a short, what the heck, Katina man, is a short squeeze? We need to, we're gonna talk about what it is. So essentially a short squeeze is, uh, occurs when a sudden surge 
in buying pressure forces short sellers to buy back shares at a higher price to cover their positions. This can amplify losses significantly. The reason is because once you have buyers, actual buyers getting into a stock and then they trigger the short sellers who are stopping out the way that these short sellers stop out and the way that you'd stop out if you were going long is they buy back the stock. So then you have double the amount of people buying. You have the people actually buying the stock buying and the people who didn't like the stock who were short selling it, they're buying as well. So you get this amplification of the price action it starts pumping up a lot higher. So you need to be un very cognizant of the likelihood that that instrument may short squeeze. Well, how do you do that? You need to monitor the short, in the short interest on the stock you're considering shorting. So a higher short interest indicates a higher potential for a short squeeze. And Adair and I always use this example of uh, C3 AI as well as Carvana having larger than normal short floats. And so the way I use it is I use trade ideas and you can too if you use Trader TV20 for 20% off. You can use this over here under the company profile. You can see short float on C3 eyes 33 and two thirds percent. What's up? NVIDIA is tanking, guys. NVIDIA is on the way down. We may see 900 very soon. Uh, yeah. yeah, the Katina man is just what, what can we do here? Where NVIDIA is in a, SMCI, Neil said, is down around $75 from the top. So chips are in a full state of Hwadunk mode at the moment. Be very careful if you're long any of these chip names, okay? Um, but to go back to the lesson, we can look at Carvana. Carvana is in vogue as well today. Everybody and their mother's trading Carvana. Look at this, 35.44% of the float is shorted. So this we have to be very cognizant of. We have to monitor the short interest in order to possibly try to alleviate um, the, the higher risk of a short squeeze. And consider alternative strategies like buying put options, right? That offer a limited downside risk while still allowing you to profit from a price decline. So now we're talking about options. So the thing with an options contract is if it expires worthless, you lose all the money. But you have a predefined limit of how much you can lose. So you buy a couple of options contracts on NVIDIA going short, they expire worthless, that's all the money you're gonna lose on NVIDIA. But if you actually take the stock short, say you shorted this bad boy at 500 or 600, and you're still holding it, it just almost touched a thousand. So theoretically, you have unlimited upside risk. You can kind of alleviate that unlimited upside risk by going through the options route and trying to buy, buy puts rather than shorting the stock. And remember guys, very important stuff. Minimizing risk, will in short selling requires discipline, thorough research, and a well-defined strategy. Never, oops, never invest more than you can afford to lose as short selling losses can be theoretically unlimited and always prioritize risk management no matter what. You need to make sure that you're hanging out tomorrow so you can trade again. And if you blow up your account, not gonna be around tomorrow, Daryl. Right, no, we definitely, yeah, I think that's really important. I think also, too, I appreciate that you noted as well, putting in these specific short uh, or risk management strategies for shorts in every presentation, right? Because right? there are different ones that are to impact each way. Okay. Also, I had a couple things I wanted to say as well, so with regards to the short squeeze aspect, be very note, uh, careful here or take note of short reports because sometimes they can lead to sell-offs. For example, we had Hot 8 and J Capital, and I'm actually going to pull up the daily chart to, to show the examples. So J Capital had this wildly titled research report, report called the, um, the Hot Pump and Dump, and it was a massive sell-off for Hot 8 to the point where Hot 8 actually had to respond to the allegations in the short report, and they were like, no, like, this is it. You know what I mean? Like, we, we have this and this to say. Like, it was January 18th. Here we go. So you can see this giant candle to the downside. That's the day the short report came in, right? Right. But then other times, specifically if there's a higher short float, we have, I always forget that Carvana's on the New York, but as, as uh, Shreve just said here, Carvana has a high short float. When Carvana got a short report from Keras Capital on February 26th, we actually had to move up on that. So let me find this. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, we didn't close that much higher on the day, but we had these massive wicks to the upside on that short report from Keras Capital, right? So short reports can sometimes be a good catalyst to short a stock, but you have to also consider things like the short float and other aspects before making those Absolutely. kinds of decisions. So that's just one thing I wanted to, um, to note as well, because that was kind of interesting. So I see SWBI, and I want to hear about this, because this is this 
This is the small cap gapper, right? Oh, it, actually, that's oh. Smith & Wesson. My bad. Oh, Smith, okay. <laughs> Which okay. is maybe a, a stranger trade for sure. But let's talk about the small capper first because we did take an L. But, I, I, you know, I, I can't be that disappointed about it because I took I took a risk. Do you know what I mean? And it didn't pay off, but I'm happy I took it. AIMD, I got out. If we broke below the range, I wasn't able to get filled right away just because there was this massive move to the downside. I saw someone else in the chat also talking about this. So, um, so yeah, I mean... I, I feel your pain. I think it was Cole in the chat saying that a AIMD got you burned. I was also burned by the stock, but it's okay. You know what? We got out. We didn't lose too much on this because we were able to get out the second we broke that lower low. But yeah, Smith Wesson Brands International, they reported earnings. I like, I saw this in the, the, the main desk and I was like, you know what, Adira, just, just file that into your brain uh, it's to see if there is an opportunity. I sit down and indeed there was one. I like that we had these higher highs, higher lows, these bounces off the 9 EMA. I got involved initially at that 1725, 1726 area. And then uh, I was basically getting out if we made a lower low. We didn't, we actually had a nice bounce around that area. We had that previous high, so that's where I got in. Um, or sorry, not pre the area we had the previous support, we were able to kind of bounce back off. So I was happy with that. If we make a lower low, I'm getting out of this, but I did already take some profit near the high of day. We were actually at a high of day, so this is usually not the type of trade I take. But again, managing risk, not a huge position. Pretty happy with it. Also, one thing I find interesting too, with regards to someone who likes ranges and patterns, that made me a little bit more confident in this trade, is look at this. We're seeing not every time, but pretty consistently. We have these dips near where we had previous highs. So we get to that 17 high, then we pop up to 1720 and we dip back at 17. Then when we get this pop into uh, 1730s, we dip back at that 1720 area where we had the previous high. Oh, so wow. I love when nice. stocks behave like this. Thank yes. you. And that's why I, I think I was a little bit ranger, so I'm a little bit more comfortable being in this trade. Already took some out, waiting for the next movement to the upside, trying not to let AIMD get me too much down here. Uh, but also, you know what I also want to look at is Tesla. Because Tesla, I don't have a play yet. I think we go either way. But look at this range. Like, whoop, whoop, whoop. I was going to try to take this short off the 90 EMA. Then I noticed we actually made a higher low. Oh. And then we come back and we reject off that 90 EMA yet again. I want to give Tesla some time to... Um, to figure herself out, but I think this could be a really interesting hop into the Cybertruck. I, I like, we, we're doing something here. I'm not really sure that Tesla knows what we're doing yet, but I think this could be an interesting time indeed. What are you looking at? I'm, I'm gonna talk about these small cap gappers. I don't have anything on at the moment, but I'm liking this LTRN. So in terms of small cap gapper world, there's only two that are tradable for me uh, right now. Obviously SGD is halted to the high side, but that's a halt fest there and kind of hard to trade. But the ones that are, Staying open and tradable LTRN. My only issue with this one, this one's got all the right check marks beside its name, above the pre-market high, above VWAP, yada, yada. The only issue, this one's a little spready. I, the, the spread can open up to 12 pennies at times. Sometimes it's low as two or three, but sometimes as wide as 14. That is not tradable for me on a name that's $9. I mean, usually right away you can tell that it's suspect volume, and as I look, yes, it is. One and a half million shares at 1130 on a $9 name ain't gonna cut it, especially if you're number three on the scanner. You gotta do more than that. So LTRN, unless the volume release comes in on this one and tightens up the spread a little bit, I'm less inclined to take it. But the one I'm really looking at here is PBM. This one is fantastic. We had a trade on it earlier on the day. Let me just flip back. Yeah, PBM was the one that we had the trade on. And this one is still valid now. So this had a definable pre-market high at 8.30 at around 3.17. We got long 3.20 because it broke the pre-market high. And look where it went to 4.31. Obviously, we didn't take it all the way up there. We took it from 3.20 to 3.60. And now it's coming into that VWAP area. And it's actually breaking VWAP, albeit, you know, on a minuscule basis. But if it bounces up off here and starts putting in higher lows and higher highs, we could take that VWAP bounce and try to maybe break through four or even touch that high a day at four and a third. But PBM, really the only one that's tradable other than SGD, of course, but SGD is halted and it's just far too volatile for me uh, to manage a risk on. We're going to keep eyes on PBM because PBM uh, is the one. I didn't mean to take, to take me off, Ramram. I was just pointing at it because I like pointing at stocks. Uh, <laughs> hi, Ramram. But yeah, that's the, the look there. Let's look at um, some large cappers. Okay, so Google um, and Apple, I'm going to go ahead and say, are the strongest of the beasts of the day. And that's funny because they've been the weakest uh, as of late. Hit it, Katina. Man. Oh, I thought you were going to hit something. Oh, you did. 
The, he, it's the only two names he's long, funny enough. He's long up. He's losing on semis, but he's, he's doing well on AAPL and GOOGL. All right? So we're going to keep eyes on Katina Ministries. Is more, TV, more Trader TV up or no? It is? No, okay, it's not up yet. So if you guys want to know what the Katina Men's trading, you can tag Adira and I on the day, and we'll gladly let you know, okay? But AAPL, the strongest of the, well, I don't want to say the strongest, one of the strongest of the bunch today. It's curling up again. It's looking to knock on the door of 172. It's got a 171.90 high. Look, it doesn't even make it back into VWAP, and the market absolutely tanked. You saw what we did off the break of 17.4, and now we're below 17.3. Apple, would, you wouldn't have know it looking at Apple. Here we go. We're eight pennies. He's off the high a day right now on Apple. We're looking at taking 172 awfully close. It's been any dips. Like, I mean, when you see the wicks on the south side of the candles over and over and over and over, you know that the buyers are overwhelming sellers, especially when you're putting in higher lows. So fantastic look on Apple. Now, the issue with Google is it's great. It's up two and a third, but now it's, it looks like it's putting in a bit of a top at 138. In fact, it kind of is, with, especially with this uh, topping tail candle here and then another red candle to make a new low. We're also breaking through the 10. We're rejecting off resistance level two on pivots. We're also rejecting off the whole dollar. So Google not looking as bullish as Apple at the moment, looking to curl back a bit, but you should have eyes at 137 and 136 and three quarters. You could either get a, a bounce off the whole dollar level or a VWAP, especially since it's strong, earmark those two levels or wherever VWAP is when you're looking at it because you could get a nice bounce there off Google. And here we go with Apple, 172 incoming, 179, 171.99 HOD at the moment, Apple bouncing off these levels and we'll see where we make it. There it is, a new high a day, 172.05, Apple's pumping. Yeah, what a market. I'm just trying to get out of, uh, just got out of Smith & Wesson because we broke below my area of interest. Um, so I'll kind of show this. Yeah, we broke below. I had that line drawn out. I saw that we dipped below the line. I said, no, Adara, we're getting out. We're actually still profitable on this name uh, because, actually, we're basically flat on the name because we did have a little bit of a move up there earlier. We took some profits. That's okay. I knew it was going to be a little bit riskier uh, because I usually don't like getting involved in things when they're out or near high of day. But you know what? Where's the next trade? I'm pretty happy with it. Also, uh, yeah, speaking of which, the actual next trade was like Adara. Never mind. We fell out of Tesla here. Um, yeah, we have to get out. Basically, got out because we had a nice, I got in because we had a nice range there for like two seconds. I took a teeny tiny position on the cyber just truck? to kind of test this. Um, <laughs> and now we're out. Pardon? You got in the cyber truck? I'm yeah, taking I get one out of the your, uh, your out of the there. cyber truck. Now, You're we were in the cyber truck, truck for, um, no, it's okay. I, I appreciate you using it. <laughs> we were in the cyber truck for less than one three minute candle. Right. So, um, it was a very eventful time. I feel like I got like whipped around there. Elon was like, we're going to go like zero to 60. We're going to be in the roadster there. Hair is flying, but crazy <laughs> move here in the Cybertruck. Really happy I got out where I did, which is when we made that lower low. Also, um, there was a super chat from earlier. Uh, oh, sorry. It was, uh, thank you so much to uh, Ahmed Almuala for the super chat there. It's 729 super chat. Not seeing a message there. Um, but also, there was something else here that I was seeing. Um, oh, RH, ring the register for me, please. Caught 136 points on my NQ short. So oh, a little bit earlier, so that was that massive move down. Congrats to you, RH. Um, thank you so much for, for being here, and congratulations uh, to you on that trade. Yeah, this, is, um, this has been a really... Really crazy day right now. We had we had one positive uh, fill there on SWBI, but I'm really working on my position sizing. So we didn't take too big of a loss on any of these. If Tesla gets back into that range, it should have been a lot more active on this than, I, than I'd be interested. But right now I'm still seeing lower highs, lower lows, and looking for something that has a bit more of a rangy opportunity for me. I'm gonna pull up Microsoft, because I'm seeing, I'm seeing it. yeah, on the side, I was like, will it be the same on my side chart? I like this. We have that. Base there at 407.40. We get up to 408.40. We're going to get, I guess, like a little bit. I mean, we can get involved in the back end in this. You know what? I think I'm going to take a really small position because it looks like we are curling back up here. And then I'll add, if we get to the base of this 407.40, if we break below it, then I'm going to have to get out. There is like an 11 cent spread on this, uh, which is kind of rare for Microsoft. So it looks like it's going to leave without me. So I'm going to cancel that order. But I do like if Microsoft keeps having this range, I think we could play this in either direction. We're basically flat on the day. Usually if we're higher on the day, then I'm more confident taking long in the range. Or if we're down in the day, I'll take Nvidia a short. 900. We're pretty flat. NVIDIA 900. Thank you, Sharif. No problem. This is, a good, this is an important level, guys. 
Like, this is, you can go on. I just want to. It's okay. It no, I, I literally, this is insane. We had this. You know, I want to say flat bottom break because it didn't really behave in the way of the flat bottom break. But we had lots of tests of that 952 before sinking to the downside. Anybody in the short? I know Daryl Flinch was in the short. I believe Kyle Burdett. Lots of people. Congrats to all of you. We had this little pause here topic and turning around that 932. And then NVIDIA said, no, you didn't. Continues to fly to the downside. Yeah, I would be very... I would I would be very cautious going along in video right now. We're down about oh my gosh now we're at 8.97 now. Okay, I, wow. I feel like a stock engineer. And he is <laughs> breaking down below 8.90s. This is this is wild. This is in, this is crazy. Yeah, I I have no words. The tape is moving faster than I can breathe. And it's interesting too because it's doing this while some of these other NQ names are moving down. But we have a little bit of a pop in Google. We have a bit of a pop in Microsoft. Meta though also getting a bit of a hit to the downside. Guys, uh, Apple is flying through 172 and the market is crashing. This is, this is crazy right now. The Katina man's yelling. He's like, this is a flash crash, what we're happening. We just, Adara, we just dropped 300 points. We're almost at 300 points off the top of the NQ right now. This is a big, big move down with Apple moving up. This is so funny. Uh, Katina Man was just yelling about $3 slippage on NVDA. <laughs> like, that's insane. We talk about 15 cents a slippage. $3 slippage. This is very, very volatile right now, Adara. Wow. Yeah, I have I have no words. Sorry for like how quickly I was running through that NVIDIA tape, but the NVIDIA tape was running more quickly than I could breathe or think. We're breaking below 890 on NVIDIA now. Meta, like continuing to break through new lows. Microsoft, weirdly still rangy, so I might need to get involved in that. We, this is what I was kind of the range I was talking about here, right? I wasn't able to get filled in the way up, but if there's an opportunity for make, me to take that short to the downside, that's basically flat on the day, I'm not gonna say no, Microsoft. I shall not say no. But uh, yeah, this is a, a really, really interesting one. Someone mentioning AMD as well. Guys asking what happens. I'm not totally sure what's happening here. Not seeing anything in these markets. Um, or any news, it could be just because some people were saying maybe a late reaction to that NFP yeah. could be, but I mean, it, I don't want to make assumptions. All we're just saying is what the market's doing. What the yeah, market's yeah. doing is sure. uh, dipping to the downside. I was trying to think of the opposite of ripping. I'm falling. We're just falling. Also, Kyle Burdett here with the super yeah, chat. Yeah, I was for just you. looking yeah. to see if we had anything here on the uh, the economic calendar. Oh. Just, uh, you know, if any Fed speaker was dropping hot lines. Big. Kyle Burdett, my man, what is up? What do we got over here from Big Kyle? $10 super chat. If there was ever a day for a dump it and tank and Hwadunk, you know what? Let her rip, Sharif. Woo! Shout out to you, Kyle. You're printed. I, I obviously I can tell that. Uh, I'm I'm very happy for I can't even talk. Very happy for you. Stan O says bulls crying, baby. Yeah, I mean, obviously, big, big, huge down. But what I can't take my eyes off is this counter cyclical move by Apple through 172 like nobody's business is up 2%. Shout out to the Katina man who's still holding this bad boy long there at the 169 and change. On what? Put some more in the long term on open. And he put more into the long term on open at that 170 level. So shout out to the Katina man uh, taking more AAPL in the long term. Look, Big Danny Ives was dropping hot lines yesterday. If you don't know who Big Danny Ives is, just Google Wedbush Dan Ives. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of the rock star of the tech analyst world right now, and he's just pounding the desk on Apple. Make of that what you will. Not financial advice, obviously, but uh, he's saying this is an, a nice time to enter. We'll see. Time will tell as it does with everything else. All right, guys, Apple's squeezing here, man. Uh, and now we're going to have to figure out a way to, I mean, are we too late on this trade? We're going to have to keep an eye out here, Adara, as we pump up back above 18.2 on the future. So getting a bit of a reprieve here. I'm seeing a bottoming tail candle also come in on NVIDIA and on Meta possibly. So I don't know if we're turning around here. Softy just pumped up as well. Yeah, I mean, Microsoft, so that's interesting. We popped up. I tried to go short this because I noticed we had this massive pop, but we are pausing at that 4086 area. Pausing, and I say that too. It, it kind of we popped up a V up, but okay, now we're, we're now we're popping up a little bit. But at the time, I was watching what we were doing in the book. We were getting a little bit stagnant. Mm. I got into a short, and then I fat fingered it out for a cool one penny winner. But I still have about half this position, small position. I'm watching what we do with that 409 area. I think I might just take everything out here now, though, because 
it is it's just getting a little bit dicey, a little bit spicy for my taste. Mahmood was asking, um, would you would you buy the dips here? Honestly, probably not. I would need a little bit more confluence for that. Um, so yeah, what a look here what? in this market. Also, Vic, thank you so much for the 499 super chat. A $70 billion investor warns Fed may fail to cut rates in 2024. Australians QIC say no rate cuts 2024. Yeah, it could be. Um, I'm going to see a little bit more. I'm going to look more into that, but thank you so much for sharing the headline. And thank you very much for your support for the show with that 499 super chat. D. Westmar is saying rotation into Apple. Yeah, it looks like lots of investors taking the bite out of Apple there. Um, yeah, I, this is a really nice look. Honestly, if we bounce here off that earlier area, I'm looking that, at that, that too, might Dara, actually. Like, get, I'm literally looking right at and that. Whenever you and I look at the same thing, I always find it really interesting. Like we're just, <laughs> ramp, I mean, ramp. we're looking at the same turn. And like Dara's that. got the three, I've got the one. She's not a D-Gen like me. I'm a D-Gen, so I have the one minute off. I like the one minute too. I just feel like the one minute was <laughs> taking way too much control over my trading life, and that's Fair. why I switched. Because my issue too is the one minute because it looks longer. I'll actually show what I used to do. So what I would do is I'd be like just seeing this, and I'd be like, oh, this is the whole chart. And it's like, no, zoom, Adara, zoom out, <laughs> as Neil says. So that's why I switched to the three minute. Um, but yeah, no, there's so so much happening here in this market. I'm trying to make sure I'm getting a sense of of everything because because wow, this is a, a massive move. Daryl Quick saying he covered his Nvidia too, short too soon. I mean, congrats to your $13 winner though. That's still awesome. Um, but yeah, the Katina man had a $10 winner there on Nvidia. By the way, he has triple eights, guys. I know you love the triple eight. Oh, of course. Well, shout out to my Asians because they 88 is a very, very like uh, good luck number over there. So, you know, triple eights for the Katina man, and now we're knocking the door of 904. He got out at 902, so he wet his beak there with a $14 winner. Shout out to Sean, A.K.A. Killer Katina. He's still red on Nvidia. He wants to put that out there though. So he he had that 10 banger, but. Yeah, no. It was, uh, well, we saw what NVIDIA did earlier, right? Big boy Khwadunk, and he was long. So uh, we're going to work out of that. So, Adara, uh, I'm staring at this 172 level on Apple. It's not going to hold here, Ram Ram, sadly, but uh, we're, we're going to keep eyes on this one. If it holds the top end of the range and then starts curling back up, putting some green candles uh, and showing you that it wants to bounce off that level, as my friend Neil likes to say, uh, we're going to get long. What, what's going on with 90210? What are you watching Beverly Hills over there? What's going on? That theme song I do not know. Da -na -na -na. Da -na -na -na. Yes, uh, that is the entrance music to the original 90210. I, I know some of the other theme songs from the era. I know the Degrassi theme from the uh, 80s. I can do the, um, you know, the early 2000s one, One Street Hill OC. I do not know 90210. I'll have to look that up. All right. It sounds okay. weirdly hard rock. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's good good times. You have to be really old like myself to know it. So I've heard of the show. I just haven't. Oh yeah, well they they made a remake of they it. They did, in the, yeah. Uh, the mid two thousands, guys. Uh, Apple's now breaking down below one seventy two. So we're gonna keep eyes on this one. The majority of the morning, Apple has been holding that ten period moving average on a closing basis. The wicks have been breaking the ten period moving average. So you're gonna have to wait for the candle to close and then get it off there if you want. Right now, yet again, it's bouncing off the 10 period EMA on the five. Um, my side charts are always the five minute. My trading charts, which are the white charts, are always the one or the three. Anytime you see black charts, they're always the five minute look. I just want to put that out there. So this is bouncing off the 10 EMA on the, on the five minute look, bouncing at that 171 and a quarter area. If we start putting in some candles to make new highs, I'm breaking through 172. We're gonna look long here on AAPL. Uh, just hope we don't get bam boozled. Now, we did put in a bit of a, a bottoming tail candle. So remember how we talk about topping tail candles and how they're awfully bearish? Well, the contrapositive is also true, which is that when you see a bottoming tail candle, it's awfully bullish. And we, so we saw that epic flush through 18.2. Jeez, Louise. Through 18.2 into 18.150. And then with the viciousness, as my friend Adara likes to say, we broke through and look at us pumping up here, putting in a new high with this with this bottoming tail candle, this is a hammer candle if I've ever seen one, baby. So look, we're pumping up here again on the future. Let's see what NVIDIA is doing. It's probably NVIDIA that's boosting up these. Uh, it is NVIDIA, and there goes 908 again. So we reclaimed that level as quickly as we dropped it. NVIDIA is a wild one, baby. But how, how high up do we go? I mean, we lost. 
We almost dropped a hundred dollars there from top to bottom on NVDA. 974 to the penny is the high and 880.58 to the penny is a low. That is just six dollars off a hundred dollar move. Wow, that's insane for uh, a name like NVIDIA, but such is, uh, such is uh, the case. So what are we gonna do? So we're gonna watch here to see, I don't wanna jump in willy nilly. I need confirmation that these candles are a hammer candle, is a bottoming tail candle, and then we'll look for something long. Yeah, this is um, this is this is a crazy market. Speaking of longs, I did get involved in Microsoft. You know, I saw that it was dumping, but then I saw we actually held up incredibly well at that 408.20 area. That's where I got involved. Then, of course, right after I get involved, decides to die a little bit. But I, we're holding up well above this 408. We're seeing slightly higher highs, or so higher, yeah, higher lows, higher highs. I like this for now. If we break below kind of that 407.80 area, which we're testing right now, I'm gonna have to say sayonara, but I do like it for now. I also am trying to work on my exit points, so I did proofread the trades this time. Someone was asking, like, how could you have so many fat finger trades? And I think the thing is, I like, I don't know, I, I feel like I need to get like my contact checked or something. I, oh, the biggest issue for me is I'll think it's like 407, I'll, I'll try to punch out like, let's say like 408, 80, and then I punch out 407, 80, right? And that's how the issue happens. Also, I'm gonna get out of this, but, um, this has been, yeah, but a bit of a bit of a rough trading day for me. But um, but yeah, I think that's my biggest issue, and so I'm just trying to be more cognizant of that. Like this this last trade too, trying to get out. I was like, you know, like let's proofread, let's make sure we're at the right place. So, yeah, I do understand. I want to be very open about that because I realize I have a, a few more fat fingers than the average bear. To borrow a quote from Yogi Bear, there, I'm trying to trying to work on that and include that or in, improve that just a little bit. What a market! Um, yeah, lots of people talking about that Nvidia hammer candle. Uh, also, you know what's interesting? AMD's recovery. I didn't want to rush into this, but then I saw Nvidia popping up a little bit. If AMD breaks above that 9 EMA area and I see at least one more candle of positivity, I may, you know, traipse into this trade. I might, you know, <laughs> hop in here, take a couple shares. I like it. Working on just taking smaller positions, getting more comfortable with my entries. I know that you shared that talk that um, Sean had with you and Patrick with regards to taking oh, yeah. more risk. And oh, that's yeah. something I'm trying to work on from that as well. Am I doing it perfectly? No, no, right? But, but I think the, the first step is trying and learning. All right, when you, when you get to med school, when you get to law school, are you going there straight from high school? I know they go straight from high school in England and stuff like yeah. that, but that's not the same. No, thing, okay? no. No, you go through undergrad, and you don't write the bar out of, one, out of the first year out of high school. You don't sit the medical exam out of the first year. It takes like seven to eight years to become good at this stuff, right? And I don't think this is any different. This is hard work. We're competing with people on Wall Street with way more tools than us, so this is a super steep learning curve, and I, I just don't, we'll never feel any differently. So, you know, you're doing Thank great. You. Don't worry Thank you so much, yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. And I mean, yeah, like I just love being able to learn from this whole community, like everybody right? on the floor, everyone in the chat, like. I feel this is an awesome way to learn. Absolutely. I appreciate you saying that. Absolutely. So, uh, Dara, we did get these um, hammer candles here, but we're I'm I'm liking it a lot better on Nvidia than I am on the actual Fuge, because uh, we got very similar hammer candles on the NQ and on Nvidia, which should kind of you know give you a little bit of insight as to what's moving the future today, especially when the futures chart looks awfully similar to Nvidia's and no others. Okay, let's just look. NVIDIA is the bottom right corner uh, chart and the Fuge is the top right corner. They look identical, okay? But the move up on NVIDIA, we're making that candle closing up decidedly above the previous candle. We're on the Fuge, we're dancing, we're dilly-dallying here at 18, two and a quarter, 18, two and one fifth. NVIDIA looks a little bit stronger and it's much higher up off the bottom, relatively speaking, than the Futures is. So. Right now, NVIDIA looks awfully good. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, it looks good from a technical sense. Obviously, we had that almost $100 flush, no question about it, but I think this one may find its way back into that 940, 930 area. On my chart, uh, VWAP's hanging out at 940, so if we have a mean reversion bounce, maybe VWAP is the level we should be looking at. Is there any other technical level off which we could reject? Well, looking yesterday um, here, so first of all, this level here at 925, 926, that's the closing print yesterday on NVIDIA. 
okay? So that could be the first level of resistance. It was supposed to be support, and then obviously it didn't, and so we could use it here as possibly a level of resistance. That's the first thing here. If Nvidia keeps pumping up, 926, 925, I'll have my eyes on that. Above that, I'm looking at another possible area of resistance, which is this pre-market trough, which is also kind of jiving with that 940 area where VWAP is on the five minute. So this trough, VWAP kind of coinciding at the moment. Uh, we'll see if we can make it back here. But right now, if we don't continue up, this looks like a dead cat bounce, right? Which is basically what we talked about when we did that, that day on shorting a pullback, right? We said that usually you have that big move down, then there is a relief pullback, and then you get short on that pullback, which is a move up, and then it can continue down. So we'll wait and see if that is the case here, because we're getting another red candle right now forming on the five minute chart, and we're rejecting that 9.15 Adair breaking down below 9.10, coming down back into support level one on pivots, which is the red dotted line on my chart. What a move down on Nvidia. This may not make it back. Uh, let's see here. We'll watch and see if 900 holds as well. All right, I'm seeing some tags there in the chat. Big Kyle Burdett. Big Kyle's printing today because this is like his fifth page super chat. Calm down there, Kyle, bro. Keep your money. I'll see when you tag me. Sharif, I just want to say thanks to all the folks in the chat who are throwing me props and ideas. I hope I help someone find a trade and manage it. Kyle, we're spending the money for you, my That's friend. Awesome. Shout out to Big Kyle Burdett. Very happy for you. And he sending out his love to everybody in the community. Um, and I, uh, I, I like that. Uh, uh, Harris, Harris Ruckel, I'm pretty sure, I, I hope I didn't butcher your last name, Harris. How can I get access to PPRO8 software to pay per trade? So PPRO8 is proprietary to real trading. We used to be called Day Trade the World, now the company's shifting and we're called Real Trading. And Real Trading is sadly not available in the United States. There are all these tests and licenses that traders have to do in the US, not so in Canada and other parts of the world. That's why we don't uh, extend into the US. So in order to use PPRO8, you have to be part of Real Trading and you can't be part of Real Trading if you're in the US. Harris, if you're not in the US, let me know and then I can try to put you in touch with a local Real Trading office wherever you are. Uh, let's see who else tagged me there quickly. Yeah. Tim, we're not putting, well, the, the, the Katina man says go on the website. Bears versus Bulls can lead you into that. Uh, he has the link there. So uh, check with Bears versus Bulls. Future Eddie, show a chart of a dead cap bounce. Well, possibly one right now on an NVIDIA, my friend, because Ram Ram. Because we're coming right back down below 900. So if I've ever seen, like if we print a lower low below 80, this will be a dead cap bounce, future Eddie. So keep your eye on NVIDIA because this could end up being a futures, uh, or sorry, a dead cap bounce. Tim is in. What's up, my dude? I hope you and Adair have a blessed weekend, fam. We hope you have a blessed weekend, my friend. Shout out to Tim is in. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I know I got some plans, but Adair and I will talk about our plans a little bit later once things have kind of calmed down a little bit. Sharif, what's the top of CELH? Let's have a look at CELH before we send it back to Adara. Um, let's find out what this bad boy is over here. CELH, so Celsius Holdings, taking a little bit of time to load there. I'm sorry, we're just gonna wait for this bad boy to load. All right, so Celsius, CELH down 0.7% today. Obviously not doing much on the day, so I'm assuming you're asking me about the daily or something like that. So we'll load up quickly here on the daily. What's Adam, why is Adam yelling about NQ? Okay, yeah, well, we're, we're breaking, Adam. We're on the way down. Uh, so there was a split here. So let's remove this split, remove bar. So we split three to one back in November. This is fantastic. Celsius Holdings absolutely looks fantastic there. Um, is, it a, is this a blue sky setup? Let's go to the monthly. Kind of looks like it. Let's find out. We wait for this bad boy to load. I don't know why CELH is uh, upsetting my trading platform here, but uh, we're going to wait for a little bit longer for this bad boy to load. Load, load, load. No, it doesn't want to load, Adara, and I don't know why. Okay, well, this is the weekly. So we are at all-time highs, or we were when we got up to 85 on CELH. I don't know where the top is. It's a blue sky setup, my friend. This 90, sorry, not 85, 91.02 all-time highs on CELH. 
impossible to say where to find resistance when we don't have any uh, prints above that. So if you're holding it, I'm, I'm very happy for you, but nothing really I can help with there. Mahmoud, Adara, Sharif, thanks for your support, guys. I'm printing today on SOXS, leverage ETF on chips. Just want to say thank you. No, thank you, my friend. Uh, Futures Eddie says, thanks. I shorted NVIDIA at 937.63, so it is a good day. Shout out to... Uh, futures Eddie, Tim, the dr time, the dream. Sharif, are you looking at big cap or small cap today? Given that big cap is moving a ton. Well, I had one, I had two trades, one on Amazon or three, one on Amazon, one on the futures, one on a small capper. So we're trading everything, baby. A cash, two dollar Canadian super chat, baby. Uh, when we getting spicy chip challenge again? Like never. Neil just said affirmatively, nope. Uh, I don't think he wants to go through that again. <laughs> Say it again, please. No. Okay. Oh, he, so, he said he was supposed to do What that. is the spicy chip challenge? Oh, you, well, I'll show you the video. So before we had the lovely production team of Ram Ram and uh, the Chilean Nightmare, we used to have another individual named by Fei Fei. Oh, he came by once. Yeah, okay. yeah, Fei Fei. Yeah. Fei Fei and the Neil and the Katina man all ordered these, like, uh, what are they called again? The Packy Chip Challenge, um, something like that. And um, they did it live at the big desk on the closing show. And there was a lot of sweating, a lot of water drinking, a lot of running around, and uh, it was funny. That's I think that would like kill me, in all honesty. <laughs> yeah, I that think it would. That sounds really cool, yeah. Because you know, you're not about that life. I. Uh, Ram Ram says you should try spicy noodles. I don't think I should try spicy anything, but um, but yeah, no, thank you. We all saw how much I was immobilized by the spicy right? chicken last week, and everyone else said it wasn't even spicy. I deserve the fail for that. That's Come on, cool. Ram Ram, be nice to her. <laughs> the Chilean nightmare apparently hit that. What are you looking at, Ram Ram? Let's Wait, talk some trading. Wait, I mean, uh, what are you looking at, Adair? Well, let's talk some trading. I mean, I was down to hear Ramin's trading thoughts, it's to be Friday, clear. It's Friday, baby. But, um, yeah, I love, got to love Friday. Eli Lilly got involved in this because I, I like that we had a little bit of a bounce off that earlier area. Then I get involved. Um, I was just going to probably try to take some of this to that 766 area. We didn't even get there. We fell below that earlier trough, so I got out. And then, of course, we bounced back up. It's okay. You know what? On to the next one. Uh, as Obi says, when the, where's, the, where's next the next trade? I found one in AMD. This one, I liked the short setup, and I didn't take it and I was I was pretty mad at myself for not having the confidence to take it but I noticed we had that support um, in the same area so I decided you know what Adara go long avenge trade not revenge trade Ooh. I call avenge trading like taking a setup when it didn't work for you you didn't take it earlier because you still like it and you want to take avenge on the stock you want to be like mm -hmm. I want to you know redeem myself you know what I mean so I like this here I'm really giving us this about like 50 pennies because it's Nvidia sorry it's AMD we just broke below that, though, so I think we might have to make a quick exit um, from this, unfortunately. I did like the setup. We initially held it really, really well, but then we just uh, did not continue to hold it. So that's okay. You know what I mean? That's, that's all right. We, it's been a rough trading day, if I'm being really, really honest here. Uh, but that, you know, that means the only way we can go is up. And I haven't had any fat fingers since that one Microsoft fat finger, which actually worked out in my favor. So that's okay. Um, also, Denard was asking about snow. So let's look at Snowflake. Okay, um, bit of a double top here at that 169.40. We fell all the way here down to these 160, just shy of 163s. But like some of these other names, we're seeing a little bit of, we're trying to make these higher lows, right? So we could have come into that one. I mean, now, as I say that, we continue to go lower. So now it's like, oh, Adara, we will, we will make you question that statement. Now we're coming back and maybe trying to make a bit of a double bottom here at that 162.60. We're going to have to wait and see what occurs here. But yeah, this has been... This one's been really uh, aggressively flying to the downside here, has S-N-O-W. Uh, let's see on the daily chart as well, because I want to make sure I have all my time frames covered here for this. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, okay, yeah, we fell off earnings. They announced a new CEO, and even though the current CEO is still going to stay on the board, they, that fell viciously. Uh, that 235 area, Pretty much, I would say, a bit of a double top, perhaps, on that daily chart. Now we're falling way below even previous areas of resistance. So previous resistance for snow, I would say, I mean, these are slightly lower, so it's not perfect. But I would say I like that 185 area. I also like that previous support becoming resistance here around 170. Then we completely fall um, to the downside here. So, yeah, it's a bit of a hard for me to have a look for snowfall. It looks like we're free 
falling here. Uh, the snow is falling to the downside, melting down. Whatever pun you want to use, it's a bad look for Snowflake. I like that. Because oh. I'm free, e free falling. <laughs> yeah, we always sing on this show, and we, I, I personally don't get any better. So No, I yeah, we deserve the crickets there. <laughs> also, shout out to D. Westermeyer. Thank you so much for the 199 Super Chat. Neil really won the challenge. Fahad ate half a chip. And so D that is a roast. D. Westermeyer visited us here live in Living Color and gave me some of the best presents ever, man. I finished all of what you've given me, the honey, the cinnamon balls and that, what is that called? That uh, sorghum or some, something like that? It's a sweetener. Oh, yeah, sorghum, sorghum. Sorghum, yes. That one is not done quite yet. Thank you very much, D. Westermeyer. Still using that stuff. It's still in my place, except, obviously, the honey and the, they're done. I, I killed those. Uh, and, again, thank you so much, brother. And he visited us here, and he knew about the green room because when I we mentioned the green room was being augmented, he knew. He's like, is that going to fit? He knew exactly what we were talking about. Like My man's been here before. That's all uh, I want to shout out some more super chats there that were that came. Uh, you, did you mention a cash? Yeah, I mentioned a cash, actually. Yeah, we talked about the we're spicy good. shit We're good thing. to go. All right, guys, we're doing the dance here with NVIDIA. We're flirting with that $900 area. Um, and But the thing is, we're putting in lower highs. Now, if we hold up at this base over here of, like, let's just say 892 or whatever, that'll be a higher low because we didn't quite make it down into that 880 and change. Uh, now, if we break above this 915, questions have to be asked because that is clearly a top. So then if we put in a higher low at this 882 and then we put a higher high above this 915, well, then is the trend, the Khwadoom trend changing? And then are we going to make our way up, possibly for a mean reversion trade? Questions to be asked on NVDA. I expect a lot of volatility given what it's done on the day. I don't anticipate it hanging out at lows. I think we probably see some sort of mean reversion, if not more of a flush. We're going to have to wait and see, baby, because uh, what a move down. You forgot about the pizza party super chat. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, I don't know. Did you put a pizza party super chat? I didn't see it. I'm sorry, man. Oh, oh yes. there is when one. are you getting yeah. spite? Oh, that's the one. He put two. How about a pizza party for this, this for the dip? I will ask the powers that be, my friend. Uh, we, uh, Ram Ram's already about that. She wants that pizza, baby. She wants her pizza and her $10 Starbucks. Let's go. Um, what are you looking at, Adair? Because I'm looking at these, uh, these mega cap names, and they're all either near lows or they're kind of sideways a little bit. The one that I was really interested in getting into is Apple, and it's kind of doing the dance here in the, in the middle of this range that it's been in the entire morning at that 171 and a half, two thirds area, give or take. Yeah, the range trader in me is heartbroken. There are no ranges to be found in this year market. If anyone sees <laughs> one, uh, please let me know. I I, like I always, I really appreciate. It. There's a lot of people in the chat here who are also range traders who will shout me out if there's a nice range in the market. So much appreciated. Hi, Sharif. I love your glasses, by the way. Thank you. Really Hi, nice. Ram Ram. Uh, but also, thank you so much to D Westmeyer for the 199 <laughs> super chat. Sharif, I'll bring more. Neil owes me dinner. Laugh emoji. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, but but yeah, this uh, this AMD coming back into a range. Every time AMD gets into a range, I want to join the party. And AMD's like, um, you were too late, girl. Like, bye. <laughs> um, so I tried to get involved here at that 211.60. Did not get filled. That's okay. Oh, hi. We're we're back. Uh, let's see what happens here. I'm gonna be keeping an eye on this because I do think. Um, I think if we get back here, it looks like we have a little bit of wiggle room. It might be too late to the party, though. We might have tested this one too many times, and then AMD is going to be like, Adara, it's a long now. Okay, get it right. Oh. But, but let's, yeah, it's, it's pretty kind salty, isn't it? Let's see what happens. Uh, we're going we're gonna to get involved, though, because what's life without whimsy, says Sharif. Um, and I agree. And every time I try to get involved, it drops, like, 50 pennies. I'm going to keep this in, though, because it looks like this is an area we're not quite done with quite yet. And as a range trader, I say... Sounds good. Let's take a look here. I need to update my side chart because there's not much going on my side chart. Smith & Wesson, I'm not getting back in because I don't have a read on this. Someone said that tape looks dead when I was showing this one earlier. It is kind of dead. The one area I do kind of like, though, is we look like we could be a bit of a short off that 17 Ask area, right? So that's where we had that pop earlier, fall down, we come in, we form support, then we form resistance again after I left this around 1130. Now we're coming back in, lower low. What are we gonna do here? If we do something interesting at 17, I am not going to say no. Uh, RL saying shorted NVIDIA pops worked so far. Let's look at, yeah, I mean, NVIDIA, that, that's a pretty solid strategy. This is one that I think I might get a little bit too scurred in. I, scurred. I know what I'm like as, as a trader, so I should be a little bit more cautious, but I think um, this NVIDIA, 
Yeah, this is interesting. NVIDIA will chop and churn for a little <laughs> bit before falling lower. I think AMD's done something semi-similar, so I should be looking at this. But you have something very cool on your screen. Yeah, this is the chip challenge there. There is the Brendo, the Katina Man, the Neil. There's Feifei. There's a rune, and you could tell like uh, everybody's a little bit nervous there. They're gonna they're gonna eat, and they're wearing gloves because you know if you touch your eye or anything like that, there may happen. Look at a rune trying to defend himself from like any splashback from uh, the chip challenge, and this was actually really good because. <laughs> We were all back there watching. This is all of us over here. This is my big head uh, over here in the yellow uh, in the yellow shirt, and that's uh, this was awesome. So if you guys want to go back and watch that Bears versus Bulls, put it in the chat. Uh, it's called the Packy Chip One Chip Challenge and survives obviously on our website there. Uh, that was good times. I remember this like it was yesterday, man. All right, Big Cal Burdett, just looking over my numbers. Man, getting the dollar amounts off the screen. Just managing my trades without managing my P&L has really made a difference. Kyle, I could not agree with you more. I was yapping to Patty, Big Patty Ice back there. I was, I was like really, you know, letting him hear it. I was just venting out to him and he was nice enough to, uh, you know, listen to me vent. And I was like yelling over and over about how I was trading my P&L rather than focusing on my setup. That is something that I do over and over and over. I'm trying to get better at. Shout out to you, Kyle, for being able to make that, to identify that and to be able to take the corrective actions. I hope I can do that one day as well. Freddie, the friendly guy. Great insight into the candles, looking at Tesla, higher lows, higher highs. Where do we go from here? Well, interesting level that we're at here, Freddie, the friendly guy. Let me tell you why, because we're right at pivots, right? And we've been rejecting kind of off these pivots for a little bit of time. And especially since it's at that whole dollar level, I'm not trying to say a dollar seventy-seven, sorry, $177 is any significant level here on TSLA, but we've been kind of topping out here at that 176.50, 177 area. If we can get above VWAP or at least make it in a view up we'll have to keep an eye on that the problem with this setup i find trading these huge down moves hard is because you have so many possible resistance levels here's what i mean by that look at this base here at 179.50 we obviously held up there before we ended up breaking down then again over here at 178 right so you have so many levels off which you could work you're just i'm i feel i'm unsure Right, you have this downward channel with obviously lower highs and lower lows. Which one, which level are we gunning for to say, okay, well, we'll probably make it up into that 178 area where VWAP is or where this bottom uh, end of the range is over here? Hard to tell. Keep eyes on Tesla. I don't want to take a counter trend trade here. It's down one and a quarter, taking it long without a real catalyst at this level is uh, it's not really in my wheelhouse. So we're going to keep our eye on this market. We're, we're coming into 18.2 again on the future, but we're doing the wick shimmy dance from the south side this time. So we're coming into that 18.2, and then look where the candles are. Look where the bottoming candles are. They're mostly below 18.2, not, not from the top, but from the bottom. So that this makes me feel like we may end up rejecting this level. I don't know if we've d we're done moving down on the day here, guys. So this might be an 18.2 short or thereabouts. Let's pack our patience. Let's see what we get what the market gives us, and then we'll jump into some trades here, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, speaking of yeah, jumping into some trades, I try to do the same, and also I appreciate what you had to say about the P&L, because I know you and I were talking yesterday oh, yeah. in the kitchen as well, and that's something I'm really trying to do as well, is I'll do the same thing where I'll be like, oh, like, let's just do this trade so I'm up on the day, which is, like, not healthy. No. And not, like, emotionally fun. You know what I mean? Now I'm just trying to be like, if you see an opportunity, regardless of how you're doing P&L-wise, take it. And I have to say, I'm, I'm really pleased as punch. Sorry, my, my hair is flying there with this AMD trade. And I want to talk about it, if I may. Oh. So I got involved in this long. I know I said I was going to wait for the short. Then I noticed we've had this pattern where we've had this little last gasp, last breath of air for this range area. Then we fall to the downside. That's what happened here. I could have scalped out 30 pennies, but I wasn't quick enough when I tried that first long. And I said, you know what? Once bitten, twice shy. We're going to learn from this. Love so that. I get involved at the bottom. I guess I wasn't twice shy because I got in. But I get involved here around that 10... Um, 80 area, I could have gotten a little bit lower, but that's okay. And I was trying to gun for the rest of that 212 range. Once I realized we weren't gonna get it, I said, Adara, we're gonna fall below. You have to secure some profits now. Um. I get, sorry, I got really excited here. I got some out of that 211 area, so we took about 15 pennies, saved a little bit for that 211.15. We took 30 <laughs> pennies on the rest of that, Let's but for do. now, we are going to put putting all of our attention on our pal Neil with his lesson of the day. Welcome to your lesson of the day, and today it is a, it's a bit of a dealer, not dealer's, dealer's choice, it's a viewer's choice, because yesterday I was asked, hey, can you do a video on recovering from mistakes? 
So if, you, uh, if you're a human being, then you've made mistakes. If you're a trader, then you've, had, you've made mistakes. Um, if you are a politician, you've never made a mistake in your life, and it's always somebody else's fault. But let's be real for a second. They're going to happen to you. And you know, whether, it's, um, whether it's a fat finger or taking a trade that wasn't in your plan or maybe um, taking a trade that didn't quite get to your level but you got FOMO, the first thing you've got to do is determine what type of mistake it is. And I go back to something a, co a coach once, once told me in baseball that it really stuck with me, is did you make a physical mistake or did you make a mental mistake? Because there's a very big difference between a physical mistake and a mental mistake. And in the sports realm, let's think of it like this. Like, did you, did you have good position on a ground ball and you just booted it? You know, did you, did you miss, did you do everything right, but you just happened to shank a layup? Or you just miss a foul shot? Like, those are just physical mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Those are going to happen. And the good thing about that is you can get rid of them with, you know, repetition and practice and that sort of a thing. Mental mistakes are different. Because mental mistakes are the kinds of things that are likely to pile on and continue to happen to you in the future. And it's a little bit more difficult, A, to recover from them, from them and B, uh, to try to eliminate them in the future. It's going to take a little bit more work. You want to not miss layups? All you got to do is practice layups. I mean, if you, like I said, if I booted a ground ball, all I had to do was take a few extra grounders after, after every single practice and you get better with your form. Uh, and your technique. As a sprinter, this was one of those things that I didn't realize until I had some proper coaching. Like, the mental mistake I would make was simply not being, like, laser-focused in my lane and, and, and looking at things around me and reacting to other people when the only thing that mattered was my technique. And I realized, if I lose a race or not, don't have a good time I like, the only thing I should care about is whether the phases of my race were good. Like, are you kidding me? Did I have a good start? Did I have a good drive phase? And then you partition, uh, so on and so forth. So, look, if you have a physical mistake, the worst one that, that I think you can make would be the fat finger error, right? That is by far the biggest mistake a trader can make that is going to be physical. That is when you key in the wrong price, you key in the wrong amount of shares, or let's just say you punch into the wrong stock. Like, it's just, you've done something that's that egregious. The easy rule for that is, do not try to make that trade work. Now, unless you have literally punched into so many shares that liquidity is a ridiculous concern relative to what is there, then just get out. There's nothing you can, you don't try to make that trade good or turn it into a winner. Just get out. I'll give you an example. I didn't fat finger anything today, so I can't give you a chart of what, of what it would look like if I had fat finger, because I didn't do one. But I can give you an idea of what can happen if you have made a fat figure, because the timing of this trade is absolutely perfect. I happened to go along off the WAP and meta. You can see that when I got out, it proceeded to absolutely tank. Now, try to imagine that I took this break at 519 and accidentally put a couple of extra zeros on it. If I didn't want those shares and I try to make it work, this goes from, ah, I just took a hit on a regular trade for a few extra shares to your entire week or month is ruined. Now, I've seen traders in this spot before, and I've seen maybe twice, actually, where it literally ended a trader's career not simply getting out. You eat the loss. It might be your worst loss of the day. It might even be your worst loss of the week if you just cover a fat finger right away. But if you don't, your trading career and your account could get absolutely blown up. So that's the first thing. Just get out of it right away. It's a similar thing. If you punch into the wrong stock, you don't want to be in it, just get out. If you punch into too many shares, get out the amount that you didn't want to be into. That's what it's all about. It's just a physical mistake. Now, if you make a mental mistake, it's a little bit different from that. Because a mental mistake... Um, an example of that might be getting absolute FOMO for something that you've never seen before, right? So a mental mistake is going away from, an example would be going away from your rules in the minute, in the moment, I should say, like when Bitcoin failed 37,000, or sorry, 70,000 today, and this happened on IBIT, and the bottom trader in me looking to buy bottoms immediately was like, oh, we're just gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna buy the dip. I see somebody on the bid in front of a support level, boom, bid enter, let's go. Oh, there's more support down here, bid enter, wait a minute, we're instantly getting stopped out. It's like, what am I doing here? 
Okay, so a mental mistake is throwing rules out the window for a bit of FOMO in that situation. What can you do about that? If you are not the type of trader that can calm yourself down before making the next move, sometimes it's best to just get up, take a refresher, you know you just did something insane, don't try to jump back into it. Now, if you are somebody that, myself, I'm probably more risk averse on the trading scale, so I keep tighter stops and that kind of a thing. So for me, the first thing I try to do is, okay, can I immediately assess what I did wrong? Yes, I can. I just tried to buy without any reason for buying. Okay, can I, is there a reason that I should be trying to trade this? Absolutely, yes, when things calm down, it's panic. So I start answering, asking a couple of questions for myself. And then I go to immediately change my approach, which is if I was blindly getting in on the way down and giving it too wide of a stop, okay, let's temper things. I can either use less shares or I can have tighter stops. Let's go with the tighter stop. So what I end up doing here after getting rinsed on IBIT is being a little bit more patient and come back to the chart for a second because it's all about the trading. I then suddenly wait for a more obvious thing to set up. Okay, well, if I actually get a bounce off a key level, go for an actual long off 39, tight to 39, get my bounce and get out with a tight stop. Then, okay, well, that got, that got a win. I had to stop out for some of it. But then can I also remain disciplined and wait for it to get down to the other bottom. Bounces off the bottom, take the long and get out. So if you have it in your toolbox to do that, fair enough. Not everybody's gonna be like that. Some people might take that hit and need to walk away. For myself, I'm going to immediately reassess, tighten up my stops in that situation or use less shares if I want to continue trading that. Because a mental mistake like FOMO and then revenge trading is gonna get you into a lot of trouble. So a couple of things you can do there. I don't think there's anything wrong with getting up and taking a walk and taking a breath. But if you can't figure out right away, what did I do wrong? What was the mistake I made? Then give yourself time to figure that out before you jump into the next trade, especially on the same thing. Now, I know lots of traders who can go from, oh, I made a mistake on IBIT, oh, but I've got to set up on a trending stock like an Apple today, that that doesn't affect it. I just stop trading IBIT, go over to Apple, that's working. That's perfectly fine too. But you need to recognize what that mistake was if it was a mental one. Be able to figure it out for yourself before you start putting more risk in the same type of thing. If it's a, if it's a physical mistake, it's easy for practice. Practice your keystrokes. I mean, gaming. Practice gaming. You actually get better and more accurate uh, with your keystrokes that way as well. There's lots of things that you can do. But when it's a mental mistake, you've got to identify the problem. And if you don't identify what that problem is, be honest with yourself about it, then you don't want to be jumping right back into that next trade. So that's your real deal. That's your lesson today. Identify, is it a physical mistake? Is it a mental mistake? And then you can make your approach as to what is going to be next. Because nobody ever wants to see, I mean, I don't know anybody that's like this, that wants to see other traders lose or that wants to see someone blow up their account. I'll never, I will never forget this when a trader, and you know what, I'm going to digress because I will never say any names, but I will never forget the moment when a trader fat fingered into a position and had the option to get out, refused to get out, and the next day it ended their career. And this was a successful trader who was, who was profitable for, an, for over a decade. For over a decade, and it all ended, and he just wouldn't take that hit, and it would have been relatively a small hit. Maybe two days, two or three days of what would be a normal day for him. So it's a painful thing to see. And that was a physical mistake. Imagine if it was a mental mistake and you're repeating it every single day. So do your best. Try to mitigate those mistakes. If you can, get better. You're never going to change who you are. You're not going to be perfect. But you can always look to grow each and every day as a person, each and every day as a trader. That's your lesson of the day. Try, try to improve and mitigate those mistakes. Hi, we're actually here with our social media team here with Pedro. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today. How are you doing this week and how are you doing this Friday? I am doing so well. I mean, Paris, we've had like a couple of beautiful days of sun here. So super nice. The weather is getting so nice. The trees are starting to blossom and bloom. So it's amazing. I'm doing great. What about you guys? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty well here. We're getting some nice weather as well. So that's been that's been great. But I want to talk about some of these behind the scenes videos. We've been filming a lot of these lately and it's been it's been a, a really fun time for us. How have you guys been coming up with the ideas for those behind the scenes kind of videos? 
You know, if you go on like the the corporate like TikTok sphere of that, people have so many incredible ideas for just behind the scenes videos, you know, and just like different ideas and stuff like that. And a lot of the times we just hear a different audio or something that we hear on a reality TV show or just funny stuff like that. And we're like, oh, we can totally use that with you guys to film all the behind the city, the behind the scenes videos. So that's kind of how like we, we try to, you know, like we just consume a lot of content. And then if we see something that catches our attention, we're like, oh, we can definitely use that with you guys. And you have been doing amazing. Like you've been getting comments and people have been telling you that you guys are like such good actors and actresses. Adara, actually people commented on the one with you guys gossiping. People are like, oh my gosh, like it looks so real. You're so professional. So you guys are doing awesome, honestly. So good job as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, thank you so much and good job to you guys for, for coming up with these. I'm sure there's like a lot of different market stuff on social media. Are there any particular topics you're seeing pop up right now and any trends or predictions about the market that you're seeing that you kind of want to share and talk about? Well, actually, so I was scrolling through TikTok today and a lot of people are talking about kind of like, People are being very doomsday-ish, like about, you know, like the predictions even with the market and all of that. And they're saying that there might be a crash and they're saying it's like March 11th or whatever, which is my birthday. So I'm like, I hope it doesn't happen. Like March 11th, my birthday, like that's that would be so terrible. But I just wanted to also hear from you guys and just ask you, like, what do you guys think that social media is going to do in terms of like the different, you know, like harder times that we have had before and you know, if this alleged like whatever actually comes to happen, then what do you guys think as like professional traders that social media will do, you know, like that might be different from the the past, the past years? And so, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I definitely, I, I'm still very new, still trading in the sim, so I can't, I can't call myself a professional for sure. But I think <laughs> from my experience, one thing I have noticed, and I've talked about this a lot, is I find Twitter to be really interesting, or X, sorry, to be really interesting in terms of seeing trends. Like you can see if a stock's about to pop up, if you type it in the symbol and we're seeing all this attention. So I think, uh, to me, I, I think X has been kind of an interesting one. I know clearly there's a lot of trends as well on on TikTok. I know you guys are on, on TikTok and Instagram. Are you, do you ever check X and do you ever notice some of the market trends on there? I am not really on X to be fully honest with you. Like I think I like X is so specific and people go on X a lot for news and a lot on X actually for like the stock market and, and all of that. Like it's super, super, super strong on X. So I'm not fully on X a lot. I'm trying to go more into like Instagram and TikTok and kind of like what Gen Z is kind of talking about at the moment when it comes to trading and the stock market and all of that. So it's been super interesting because I've watched a couple of videos and even what Jad spoke about how even celebrities and different people affect the market and all of these things. So I'm just constantly wondering these days, like how will social media interfere, you know, or like make it a little bit different, might be worse, might be better when it comes to, you know, when the market shifts a lot and if we, you know, like God forbid, like have actually something bad coming up, then how is that going to play out with, you know, reality? Like if, you know, if you put into play what social media has been doing for the past, I don't know, like couple of years or so. So, cause it'll be totally different than like 2008, for instance, you know? So I'm just very curious, but I hope we don't have to see it. Yeah, no, I mean, I hope so too. And I think one thing too, I appreciate that as well. Some people in the chat I'm seeing mentioning Reddit as well. And of course we know Wall Street Bets has, has run this up. So I think, yeah, certainly important to think about the role that social media can sometimes play in, in uh, market events. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you have for us that you wanted to, to chat about um, today? Because I know there's a lot, of course, always in social media and the markets. I know. Yeah. So I was also just researching about and looking into it and talking to my sister a little bit about this because she studied um, a little bit of like politics and all of that. And I just think it's super interesting to see because, you know, like um, historically speaking, usually like the arts are like the second movement that would like um, affect the different parts of society or so to speak. So I'm just interested to see again how kind of like we're coming into more of a global culture kind of moment and, you know, art is and, and media and social media per se and everything that's created is so much more global these days. So I am just interested to see, you know, the progression of how that is going to affect the stock market and how it's going to affect people that are trading or all of these things. So I'm just very, very interested to see that. And people are starting to talk about it a lot on social media as well. And just like how these predictions and all of these things 
might not be as accurate these days because things look so different than they did before. So, yeah. Leah, thank you so much for coming on and sharing that. And we will see you um, next week. Always happy to have you. Have a great weekend. All right. You guys as well. Thank you so much. Great interview with Dara. Thank you. you. And thank you so much to Pedro and, and Jed for coming yes. on and killing it with the social media. Always happy to have them. And here's some different insights. And they've got great ideas. So in case you guys don't know, what they do is they uh, send out a group chat, a group message. They're like, guys, for this week's social media post, we need X, Y, and Z. Then the undefeated production team of Ram Ram and the Chilean Nightmare, they go and they organize and they chase us down. They, they tie us down. They're like, no, you have to shoot the video. Let's go. And then... Say that again, Ram Ram. She literally chases us down. She wants you to guys to know she does a lot of running around here. <laughs> um, so yeah, then that's what they do. We shoot the videos and obviously you guys know, you guys see the finished product. So they're obviously in Europe and that's how we're communicating. We're doing everything through text and group chats and stuff. And we're pleased to have them. They're good dudes, uh, good people, obviously uh, Pedro and uh, Jad. All right, let's talk a little bit about this trade. I'm long, A, A, P. L, looking I for that move, that. I know, looking for the, that decided move through the half dollar. It's having a lot of trouble breaking through the half dollar. Technically, it's broken it. High day is 52, but we're not getting any follow through, owing likely to this top that we put in over here. So I'm taking some small size here just to wet my beak and maybe just participate in this trade. We'll see what we get. This starts breaking down. We're going to end it. I'm, this is a calculated gamble here to see if we can break through that half dollar and run. It's obviously running counter market, no question about that, because, well, the market's down 0.88%, down into the right, lower highs, lower lows. But look at Apple's chart, nuh-uh. So, well, it was down six days in a row. So, I mean, it stands to reason that we get, you know, that relief rally kind of thing on a, on a down move. So, totally expected, that totally, ex you know, realistic that we see Apple up against the market just owing to what it's done the last uh, week or so. Yeah, Apple's like, who's the dead one? Not me. Uh -huh. um, you know, it's just, just a joke I made once because Sharif called Apple the dead one and now this yes. is like stuck in my brain. But today... It is not uh, the dead one. Also, you know, I want to shout out, thank you so much to everyone for the support for our social media team in the chat. Also, Angelina in the chat saying, I started growing as a trader with your group. So much respect for this amazing team. I'm so alone and I found a great team. Yeah, trading, uh, from what I've heard, can be really isolating for sure if you're trading. Like, because in all honesty, I started trading here, but I know Sharif has talked yeah. about what it's like trading in your room and, and throwing slippers and things <laughs> like that. And so, not sorry to, to do that, but, but right. So at I think mirrors it, and at glass, at it was like, all no, dangerous will, throws too. Like, oh, my God. Yeah, no, yeah. not good. But, no, yeah, I'm so happy you found our community. And thank you um, so much for, for your support and for being here. We love having everybody here. Absolutely. Also, shout out to Z Trades for speaking of support in the chat because I was asking range trades anybody. And Z Trades gave me this Baba range. And I'm keeping an eye on this because we're getting near the bottom of this. I like that 7280 bounce. You can get, it looks like you can take this at the 7315. That's not bad at all. I would also probably take a bit of this out at that area where you see a Scotia chop and turn around that 7307s. I'm going to wait for a touch of this, a bounce of this, and then I shall hop on the Alibaba Express. Oh, I like it. Let's, thank you. Let's also look at the AMD because I did have another trade in this while Neil was talking about the real deal. And I kept, as I was in this, I kept thinking about what he was saying because he said some words on fat finger which is an affliction I may or may not suffer from. Uh, I definitely do. And that's something I'm really trying to work on as well, right? Like someone was saying, something has to change if you're fat fingering this much, which I agree. I do agree. And so uh, I tried to be more cognizant, but basically I had the long here. It didn't work. Then I tried to take the long again, and I was a lot scalpier about it, and it ended up working out. Then my, my thought with the short was, I kept saying, Adara, you're trying to short this every time we give up the range, and you don't do it. What, what's, what's spooking you out? I decided to get in. I saw we had this, I think we got like 10, two 1080s, and I was like, Adara, I just have to get involved in this. I punched in. I took out uh, most of it around the bottom of uh, that range area. I saved a piece for the dream. Obviously, my dream lasted about two seconds because we dropped another $2, but I can't complain. I'm happy with this trade, and I'm mostly happy because I took the initiative to do it, even though it scared me a little bit because we are near low of days, and that's not usually a setup I take. But yeah, I was, I was pretty happy, and I think sometimes it's just about showing initiative and showing confidence, and so I appreciate all the honesty from everyone everybody in our chat and in our community and also Neil's lesson I found I learned a lot from and yeah I, I just really wanted to say that and I really wanted to shout that out also Martha and Aya welcome to Trader TV live as a yes, member thank you Very so happy much to have for you. joining that, 
This market has been awesome. Bob is bouncing, so I'm going to hop into that log. And I'll How do are the you lesson. doing with Apple? I'm going to get out of Apple just because I have to do the lesson and I can't manage the trade while I do that. So uh, we're going to get out. Fl Whoa, it's not letting me out. Tadera. No. no. <laughs> it's the worst when they won't let you leave. They've been Today, cold. this week has been a hell of a week. I got to tell you that. So, uh, and I'm, I mean that as a joke. All right, we're out of this. Let's uh, do the lesson here and... It's probably going to break up now that I'm out of it, but that's fine. I mean, I can't do both. Here we go. Talking about minimizing risk while short selling. Uh, we could have started the lesson off with, we could have started the week off with this lesson, but we chose to keep all the risk management stuff, uh, the, the, the more boring stuff, let's be honest about it, for the end of the week. We know you guys wanted to really focus on the actual trading strategies themselves, not how to manage risk. I tried to throw in a lot of risk management in every uh, lesson because short selling is inherently risky. So the first thing we're going to talk about is there are five key approaches here to minimizing risk while short selling. The first one we want to talk about is obviously the utilization of a stop loss. Goes without saying that you have to use stops. I would recommend you use stops while going long or short. It doesn't make a difference. I'll use them both. But in shorting context, almost a, a requirement here. So in case you don't know what stop losses are, because we always have newer viewers coming in, these are order, orders Excuse me, that automatically exit your position if the stock price reaches a predefined level. So this helps limit, obviously, some potential losses if the price in this scenario was to unexpectedly rise against your prediction. So we're shorting. Keep in mind that the idea of shorting is to take a stock lower, to your thesis being that it's gonna go down in price, you're gonna buy it back when it's cheaper, and you're gonna profit from the difference, okay? The placement of your stop loss also plays a crucial role in its utilization, no question about that. So typically, or ideally I should say, you should set up your stop loss above a recent swing high. So when you see peaks and troughs on the chart, if you're getting short below, the, uh, below a trough, you should be looking to the corresponding peak that took place before where you wanna place your stop. So set the stop loss order above a recent swing high or a short term resistance level. Now resistance levels are usually horizontal. So for example, if we want to take Apple short, uh, south of 180, we would be looking to place our stop above that 180 level. So I'm talking about a swing trade here because 180 was a key support level on Apple until it gave up the goods, I think either earlier this week or late last week. Now, we know what happens when a previous support level gets broken. It typically acts as resistance. So what you wanna do is you wanna have your stop a little bit above that resistance level. So if it does break 180, you've got a little bit of room there, right? So that's where you're placing your stop, above a recent swing high or above a key resistance level on the daily, a horizontal resistance level. The other strategy here, the approach to minimizing risk is maintaining position size discipline. So important. I should tell this to myself too. Allocate only a small portion, I would suggest, to your capital for each short position. This strategy limits the overall impact of your portfolio if the trade goes against you. And you could also consider using a fixed percentage of your capital in your account per short position or a dynamic approach which looks at uh, adjusting the allocation for the short position based on your perceived level of risk for that instrument. So that's a mouthful. So one thing you could do is you could say, okay, look, I never use more than 5% of my capital on any one long position. You could kind of augment that rule a little bit and say, all right, I'm never going to take anything uh, more than 2.5% of my capital on any one short position or any variation thereof. So that's approach number one. Approach number two could be a dynamic approach. Changes as the, the volatility or the risk changes per instrument. So you could say for small cap gappers, I'll never take more than 1% of my account short in, a, in any one short position. But for large caps and the MAG7, I can go up to two or two and a half or three. So you can have a dynamic approach based upon your perceived level of risk for the instrument in question, all right? Bless you, Ram Ram. The other key approach to main, uh, managing risk while shorting is to conduct thorough research on the name that you wanna sort. Uh, so you should also, in addition to obviously using technicals, because technicals is 
percent of what we do around here, you should consider the company's fundamentals as well to identify potential weaknesses that could justify a price decline. This includes things like financial statements, the competitive landscape for that company, the management team, are heads rolling, or is there a weak management team there, and the industry trends. Look at the chips, for example. Look how strong the chips have been as of late. I mean, don't look at today, but you see what I'm saying. The chips have been a monster as of late. Compare that to the electric vehicles. They've been, you know what? as of late, I don't wanna use that expletive, but you guys know exactly what I mean. So the trend for the sector should also influence your decision in whether to take that bad boy short or not, all right? So analyze fundamentals. Also evaluate the market conditions to understand the broader economic factors, the sector performance, the potential news catalyst that could impact the stock's price. I always give the example of interest rates and solar stocks. Solar stocks so interest rate sensitive because of the uh, capital uh, layout that you have to do initially. It's very capital heavy. And so typically you're not using your own money, you're using borrowed money. But if you're borrowing at exorbitant rates, that's gonna eat into your margins, that's your profitability. So when rates come down, solar stocks typically do a bit better. So you have to understand the nuances between the overall market conditions and the instrument specific to what the one that you wanna take short. So that's the one. And then combine obviously technical analysis. That just goes without saying. With fundamental analysis to identify potential entry and exit points based on the historical price and volume data. And also, you gotta be mindful of these costs and fees. It's not free to short, guys. You gotta borrow these shorts. Sometimes it's free to short. Like sometimes on my platform, I don't have to pay a, a real trading here. Sometimes it's free. Some, if there's a lot of demand for that particular name, you may have to pony up, all right? So short selling involves borrowing shares from a bro broker, which incurs borrowing costs as well as fees. These costs eat into your potential profits, so factor them in to your calculations and then compare the borrowing rates. IBKR is charging me X, um, whoever else, Quest Trade is charging me Y. So you wanna know who is charging the least fee so you can make your calculations to say, well, I'm gonna be short biased for a little while. Um, I wanna use this broker or that broker. Also look and see which brokers offer more uh, instruments available for shorts. So I know there are certain brokers out there that are like, we're the specialists in short selling. We offer the most amount of uh, equity names available for short. Some others, no, that, that's not what they focus on. So get to know your broker and see how much is gonna cost you and what is gonna be available there for shorting. And then you gotta understand short squeezes, guys. Short squeezes, these are very important to understand because you could lose your money in a hurry. So what is a short squeeze, for those that don't know it? A short squeeze occurs when a sudden surge in buying pressure forces short sellers to buy back shares at a higher price. So when you take Tesla along through 180 and then it dips below, say, your stop at 175, What's happening there? You're, you're selling the stock at 175 for a $5 loss. So the opposite of that is if you take Tesla short at 180 and it goes to 185, you gotta buy it back at 185. So the, un, the point here is there may be double the amount of buying. So people actually wanna buy that stock either for a swing trade or for their long-term portfolio, but the people who were short the stock who are getting squeezed have to buy it back in order to get out. That's their stop. And so what ends up happening is you have double the amount or more of the amount of buying. So the stock keeps pop, 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 keeps pumping up and then you find yourself getting short squeezed. So you have to understand the mechanics of that. One of the ways to keep um, your eye on a possible short squeeze is by knowing what the short interest is on that specific instrument you wanna take short. So a higher short interest indicates the higher potential for a short squeeze. So one of the ways that I and a lot of other people on the floor over here find out what the short interest is a name is we use Trade Idea. Shout out to the NOS boss and his crew. Use Trader TV 20 for 20% off and you can get access to this whole thing over here. And what I do is I go in here and I say C3AI. What do we got on C3AI? Well. Look at this column over here, short float, 33.61%. So I know of the 105 million shares that are out there being traded, 33.61% of those shares are borrowed for shorts, okay? 
So the higher that number is, the higher the likelihood that you could get a short squeeze. You need to be cognizant of that number. And con consider alternative strategies other than taking something short. For example, you could buy put options, right, that offer a limited downside risk while still allowing you to profit from a price decline. So now we're talking about options. So what you can do is you can buy put options. That's gonna cost you X amount of dollars, but that's the most you could lose. When you buy that put option, that's exactly what your risk is, the cost of that option. If, you end, if it ends up um, expiring worthless, that's all that you have to lose. Conversely, when you take a stock short, um, use, not using options, just going through the regular short mechanism, Theoretically, your upside potential, your, uh, you have your potential loss is unlimited because theoretically, this stock could keep going up and up and up and there's really no top to it. Obviously, realistically there is, but theoretically there isn't. So one way to kind of mitigate risk is to try to take it short through put options rather than actually shorting it through your broker. And remember guys, three key points. Minimizing risk in short selling requires very strict discipline, thorough research and a well-defined strategy and make sure never invest more than you can afford to lose as short selling can, losses can have unlimited risk. Guys, I have friends who message me and be like, should I take a mortgage out on my home to buy Apple? Should I take a home equity mortgage to buy Nvidia? Should I uh, uh, you know, use my credit cards to get into, uh, into Broadcom? And my answer is always the same. Never ever invest more than you can afford to lose, whether you're going long or whether you're going short. So by extension of that, if you can't afford to do it without taking a home equity mortgage, my personal opinion, and I'm not giving anybody financial advice, is to not do that. Invest what you can afford to lose. And always prioritize risk management. That is the lesson of the day there. Yeah, and thank you so much, Sharif, for delivering that lesson. My also, pleasure. one thing I wanna say too is, um, you know, sometimes when I was looking as well on Investopedia, and I had this note that I thought was kind of interesting on this, make sure to kind of stay away from counter trend trades also as a risk management strategy, specifically for shorting. So it sometimes would be easier to look for short opportunities in weak sectors to minimize risks. If the sector's already down, this name that you're shorting might also be to the downside. So I thought that was kind of an interesting... Um, Interesting look there as well. Also, as I said earlier, be very aware of short reports because sometimes they can send the stock down, cough, cough, hot eight <laughs> on that J Capital uh, short report. But also sometimes they can they can send the stock up like Carvana because Carvana had a short float. And that's where the research comes into play, right? Obviously there were other factors as well. And the hot eight short report was a bit more scathing to the point where hot eight had to come out and be like, we you know, they had to like literally talk about the short report. So so yeah, just be just be really cognizant of that as well. I think when with regards to risk management when short I am in two trades. One of them, Joel Freston, asked me why I'm long NVO. I want to talk about it. Go. I like that we had this, we had higher highs, higher, okay, sorry, I guess we had higher lows more. And I noticed we were kind of um, bouncing off this 90 MA pretty decently. If we break below that 132.50, I'm out. And I'm going to take this to about that 133 area where we had a skosh of uh, resistance. Skosh. This is a really small trade. Yeah, skosh. <laughs> this is a really small scalp. Um, we're, it's scalp season over here. Basically, I'm trying to get more comfortable in trades where I like the setup and I feel okay with them. I'm okay with this right now. We haven't really dipped along my, beyond my point of entry. I do see what you mean though, Joel Freston, like it's not a setup in terms of any kind of longer term move. For a scalp, I do not mind it, though it's kind of making me question my life choices just a little bit here, because <laughs> we're, we're dipping a bit, but we're giving this about 20 pennies, and um, it's a really small position size. I was really just trying to dip my toe uh, so I could hopefully dip my beak or what might be <laughs> later down the line. <laughs> also, I'm in another uh, NY name right now, and that's Alibaba. Thank you again to Z Trades for pointing out this range for me, and I'm gonna draw out. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm taking pieces of this position out where I see previous areas of potential resistance. One of them we're, we're approaching, hopefully with a swiftness, and that's gonna be that 72.95 area. I like that we had a little bit of chop and churn here earlier. Hopefully we'll get some of that out there. Second area, 73.07. Look where we had a little bit of a dip potential earlier. I see that as a potential area for a little bit of weakness and I'd like to get some profit out around there. Last but not least, VWAP. Uh, arguably kind of the top where around we had this range, right? We had a little bit of butting our heads trying to get above VWAP around that 73.17. If I can get the position out by there, I would be pleased as punch. Yeah, no worries, Joel Freston. Yeah, I saw your message earlier, but I didn't, you know, I wanted to wait to explain it out loud after the lesson, so. Appreciate your patience on that. I do understand the confusion because I know my trade strategy is a lot more scalpy than you know the traditional kind of right. stuff, and it doesn't always work out. But it's 
I find that I'm the most successful when I try to adhere to that type of strategy. I like and it. Speaking, thank you, I appreciate that. And speaking of scalps, I still have my eye on AMD. AMD's not left my side chart because look at this range we're having. We get to 210, we go back down to like just shy of 209, we get back to 210. I need to be keeping a better eye on this. Uh, and I, I honestly find I'm always too late to the game on this AMD range trade. That, that's what happened the first time and that's why I was a bit more careful the, the second two times, adhering to Neil's lesson about being cognizant and trying to get in, involved. I think, yeah, I think this could be interesting. This AMD, I wanna wait for a couple more touches and I want to be watching the book while I do that because I find for price entries, specifically for my scalps, the book is incredibly helpful. Also, I love this from Kendall Lopez. I like to think that fundamental analysis tells you what to buy and technical analysis tells you when to buy. And that's what people that's really want to say all the time. I mean, the people that don't want to believe fully in TA, they'll say, no, fundamentals have a place, so TA has a place as well, and here's how we're going to use them. And then you have individuals like Michael Noss, don't care what the catalyst is. They look at the chart and they say, the market discounts everything. So if the market likes what it sees, it'll be reflected in the price chart. And that is his philosophy and that is typically the philosophy of most mar chartered market technicians and that's fine, right? We're not gonna uh, go into a dissertation about which uh, one is accurate and which one is not. If that works for you, using fundamentals as uh, your guide to which uh, companies to buy and technicals as to where to get in, kill it, man. Absolutely kill it. If that works for you, fantastic. All right, Apple just got uh, in here at 47s. Wet my beak there at the top at 69s because that's always where I'm gonna hang out at 69s and then we'll see if we can get a break through that 80 top. Big Kyle Burdett, this perma bear is shocked, shocked that buyers have not flooded into this dip yet in Nvidia. Interesting, yeah, it's, uh, well, we're not done the day yet, Kyle. So uh, let's see what we get the rest of the day, you never know. Um, and besides, I mean, it's not unheard of to, you know, like, look, have you seen the daily chart? We need a red day on Nvidia. And, it stands to reason that that red day would be quite large given that the move was uh, you know, exponential. So I don't think that this is, uh, I don't know, I don't know, Kyle. I don't think it's too telling yet. I think NVIDIA could see more upside. And I was talking to this dude over here, I don't even know his name. Um, and he's like, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, NVIDIA has extended this and the other. I'm like, but brother, what if they guide up again and the analysts have to relook at their uh, their estimates based on the new guide right i mean they've guided up three times in a row now why not stop at a fourth so we'll see mike i wish powell will say pump the market at the end of speeches market balances 10 percent lol he did say close the door so you never really know i love the close the door thing i use this meme all, i just like this to my sister because she's like what does close the door mean and yeah. i was like google it but no it's just really <laughs> funny also what's interesting too is powell will not tell you um when we've achieved a soft landing because that was actually a real question from yeah, a member of congress they, they want joking. everything passed to them on a silver platter. That's not how the market works. That's not how economics works. I mean, you always know where we are after the fact, not during the Anyway, uh, these guys, it's just, they're interesting people. It was really entertaining. Yeah. yeah, no, good time. That's one job I would absolutely hate, uh, being a politician. Um, 499 Super Chat from Vic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Trader TV Live team. I almost made 100 and 80,000 this week because of all the stocks you all analyzed. I'm short, it's almost bear season. The Katina man hitting the bang for you there, spinning the money for you there, Vic. It sounds like you could loan me out a buck or two. Give me, <laughs> I'm kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding of course. Shout out to you, Vic. Uh, very pleased for you, my friend, and I hope you continue to print. All right, we're, uh, we took some out there on 69s on T, on, um, on AAPL, it moved back up into 73, but now it's doing this consolidative gains here between that three quarter dollar and a half dollar. Well, let's see how this resolves it there. Yeah, I mean, speaking of how this resolves, I saw Ponzi Fonzi in the chat Ponzi. having a discussion on AMD. Which way is it going to go? I mean, I have no idea. I've been trying to get involved in this scalp. But we're, this range is getting more and more confused. Now it looks like it's going to be a bit shorty. I will say what I've noticed recently as someone who spent a lot of time looking at AMD today for someone who doesn't normally look at AMD. What I've noticed is we'll have a move up, a move down, a move up half the way, all the way down. We have that again here. We move up, we move down, 
and then we move up, and now we're a little bit rangier. I, if we get back to the bottom of this range and we bounce, I'm gonna take it long, then I shorten it at 210. That's the plan here. I don't know if I pay enough attention to a stock at one time to be able to commit to this. I'm gonna be really honest. I have way too many charts going on. I'm also into longs. That being said, AMD, kind of an interesting look, and I, um, I, I, I think it deserves some attention, so shout out to Ponzi Fonzi there. Also, Novo is dropping. I added in a little bit here, because I, I, we, we're holding that area pretty well. We're no longer holding that area, and the spread widened to a degree that I don't enjoy. So we're getting out of our Novo. How much do I have in here? Okay, Can you there we believe go. this is worth we're more out. than Tesla now? I cannot believe Novo is worth more than Tesla. I saw that this morning. Also, oh, someone was saying in the chat, is it Novo Nordisk or Novo Nordisk? I usually say Nordisk, but I know our, our guest, Don McCaffrey, who was on the show on Wednesday. You can oh. check him out Wednesday afternoon. He's like an expert on deals in biomed, so I assume he knows oh. better than me. And he said Novo Nordisk in his interview with Brendan. So I, maybe it is Nordisk. You know what I mean? I, I don't yeah. know. I don't know, but also here, Tim is in asking for thoughts on SMH short, swinging April 19th, 220 puts. Okay. Let's pull this out, SMH. As Sean says, sometimes when looking at this, shaking my head, let's see how much we shake our head at this. Uh, I, right now, obviously on the daily, Remember. a really beautiful short, but, um, or in the intraday, I mean, but let's look at the daily and the weekly for you, for these puts. 220 puts. I mean, here's the thing. We're, we're kind of on an uptrend, right? So it's a little bit hard for me to, to read this. I think, to me, it could be a little bit speculative. Um, I'm going to be really honest. Just because we have this massive move up, right? What I'm seeing is higher highs, higher lows. So I think right now a short could be a bit speculative. That being said, you said 220 that's, that's puts. We're below 230 that now. That all, semiconductors, NVIDIA. right? Yeah, yeah, NVIDIA. And thank you, Sean. I appreciate that. Because I know Sean knows the SMAs very well. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. thank you, Sean, for bringing that up. Yeah, I have to say, I'm going to be really honest with you, Tim, as in, to me, especially given the semiconductor strength we've had as of late, all-time highs for AMD, all-time highs for NVIDIA, Intel waking up a little bit. I wanted to say something nicer about Intel, but, uh, but yeah. Well, all we, these... we all know that Intel is hot trash, right? Okay, I didn't Intel say that. is absolute hot trash. Uh, you know, they can't, they can't live without government money. And uh, that's just, that's the way it is, Neil. I'm sorry, brother. Uh, but, um, yeah. Hot Trash, a.k.a. I-N-T-C. <laughs> he said, well, a Dallas Cowboys fan would think something like that. No, guys, uh, you know. Yeah, we're, 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 uh, we're just being uh, uh, trolling to each other here. You know how it is around here. Yeah, I get trolled for Lee Auto, right? And um, no, whatever, it's all good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's hot trash. So. Yeah, no, I think I think. I'm that, sorry, Neil. <laughs> it's okay. That SMH look, though, I'm I think. Sorry, yeah, Neil. Tim is in. I think <laughs> I, I'd like to kind of see a bit more of a trend reversal because right now it does seem like it's in an uptrend. Someone said this could be a leg down. We're gonna have to wait and see in that. But speaking <laughs> of SMH, let's talk about this five dollar super chat from Jason. Thank you very much, Jason. Thoughts on Nvidia? NVIDIA, P.S. You rock, Adara. You rock, Jason. Thank you so much for the super chat. And thank you for that compliment. I'm always so happy to be here and look at these markets. I get so energized by these charts and these markets. And uh, what a move. Yeah, this daily on NVIDIA is a little bit terrifying. But I'm going to look at the intraday right now because I... Okay, I actually really like this look. I haven't looked at NVIDIA all day except for these two lines okay. I drew. But we had this massive move down, right? We come into 885. Then we see this candle with a little bit of a wick to the upside here, though some of that may be dark pool. Then we have this massive move up into the 9 EMA, 895. We get a hammer or an inverse hammer. We, we get a candle here with a nice little wick up here, and then we pause. Mm. We've been really top and turn. We've been really rangy here. I don't want to make assumptions, though, because I usually find when we see a dance around a level like this, so say VWAP or 9 EMA, we could go either direction. We could continue dancing and then chop down, or we could continue dancing and chop up. That hammer candle, though, uh, does show that you know we have some maybe some room to the upside. It looks like Nvidia is taking a breath in either direction. What I would wait here is I would wait for a decisive candle, red or green, to kind of get a sense. That being said. We have seen earlier today a nice tasty short off the 9 EMA. So that could continue or we could bounce off the 9 EMA because I find sometimes there can be this 9 EMA flip flop in the middle right. of the day. Right. Because uh, I've been burned by that a couple times if I'm being really honest. You know, making assumptions when we don't have that move yet. So what I would say is I would say whatever direction you're thinking, wait for a candle of confirmation. I hope that helps, Jason. Thank you very much. Uh, for this uh, super chat. I do apologize for my voice, still a little bit under the weather, but trying to get a bit better here every day. And, and thank you, everybody, for the support. There we go. Shout out to the Neil, the real deal, a.k.a. Neil. Um, we're just trolling each other, guys. I just want you guys to know that.
Um, all right, guys, <clears throat> what else we got on? We're still holding um, Apple break even at 47s. It's bouncing off the 10 EMA on the five uh, umpteen amount of times. It hasn't closed below the 10 EMA saving except for one quick dip there at 11.45. Uh, otherwise, it's been holding it like a glove, that magnetic effect that the OBE, the one, the Kenobe always mentions. Uh, it's doing that with the 10, but it's putting in also lower highs, so I'm very cognizant of the fact that we uh, crested out at 80. We put in another crest there at 69s where I got out, and now we're, uh, we're cresting, looks like at the 55 penny area or thereabouts. Let's wait and see, I'm packing my patience, baby. Uh, we're gonna hold this one, see if we can get it. I mean, it's the only one that's really stronger-ish and remaining strong on the day. Even Google, which was strong on the day, which was up more than Apple earlier on, is now curling back down below VWAP, below 137. So I would say to you guys, Apple looks the strongest of the names on the day, whether or not we get a nice move into 173, which is what I'm uh, aiming for at the moment, entirely different story, but everything else down to the right or consolidative, Apple still putting in incrementally higher highs and higher lows from a more macro view. So continue to watch that. The market just came back down into lows again, baby. So uh, even though we're not printing lows on NVDA, um, at the moment, the market is at low of day. And let me just pull in this on the side. Say that again, Katina, man. It's getting close on NVIDIA, he says, and he's not wrong, but the market just printed an 18,126. Could we see 18,12 today? At one point, we were talking about if we could see 18,5. Now we're talking about seeing 18,1. So it shows you what kind of market volatility we're getting on the day. It's fantastic if you're day trading here. Um, holding above the 50-point level for now. Uh, this is what the Katina man was talking about when he said, well, we're awfully close into that 880.58, which is technically the low of day made by this hammer candle over here at around 11.30 because we're incrementally making lower highs, lower lows yet again, breaking down through 890 into triple eights. And I was told by somebody in the chat of Asian descent that triple eights means wealth. Oh, in so uh, even the better. Asian culture, yes. So, uh, not triple eights, excuse me, double eights. Um, yeah, there it is. Money's flowing down, baby. We got Benjamin Franklin all over the screen. Uh, so, yeah, the Katina man is all right because now we're breaking down 885. Here we go on Nvidia. So, now we're coming into this consolidative bottom over here. So, technically, the print, the low print is 880, but look at where the closing prints are. They're all above 884 or 885, thereabouts. We are knocking on the door right now. We're about to break that. It looks like a lot of market weakness coming in here, Adara, not the least of which is catalyzed by NVIDIA, NVDA headed down. Down to the downside. Yeah, I was, yeah, that NVIDIA move down is nice. I also have my eye on, um, I'm still in Baba. Thank you so much, Pitchbull, saying uh, good entry. Yeah, I have, to, I have to thank Z Trades for pointing this one out to me because, you know, I was saying I want a range opportunity. Z Trades was like, look at this Baba range. And I, I waited for this move back down here. We bounced and I got in. So thank you for that. Took out some of this profit here around that area. We had a little bit of resistance uh, earlier. Or a little bit of, yeah, I guess a bit of resistance here. That 7 D295. I have my next beak wetter set for 7305-esque because that was where we had a little bit of that chop and turn earlier. I'm saving a piece for the dream around VWAP. If we break above VWAP successfully, though, I'm going to go for the big guns, and that's going to be the top of this range here. Speaking of uh, the big guns, Jared Tweedle saying, should have kept an eye on SWBI. So let's see. I ended up basically flat on that trade. I took some profit, and then um, we had to get out because it dipped a little bit below my area. Oh, this is a nice one. This is actually kind of rangy. I should have kept a better eye on this one because this is a... So really nice look here on SWBI. Yeah, I mean, there's there's been nice little bounce opportunities. I should have kept a better eye on that. So thank you for pointing out this continued move for me on this name. Um, yeah, what else am I looking at? I, I like this AMD look, I have to say, as well. I've been watching this AMD just kind of for, for opportunities. Uh, let's switch to the three-minute because I've been trading off the three-minute for AMD because, like, like I said, I've been watching. You know, we have a bounce. I thought there was going to be raise here. I got out pretty early once I noticed we fell. Then we come back. I get out, and then I notice, you know what? We're, we're kind of getting not as much movement as you thought, so you scalp out here, right? So that's basically what I'm watching. I like that we have this bounce here off into that uh, 208 
area. That 209s was pretty tasty for the bottom of range. If we reject 209s, if we get that high, that could be an interesting short for me. Basically, with AMD, it's been a lot of watching the book and watching how we've been glued to the charts, and that's where things have been interesting. Uh, someone here was mentioning, Nanya Bin is mentioning BA short. So let's look at Boeing, which I we had uh, some more negative catalysts with the Boeing 737s. FAA being like, hey guys, we actually want to look at uh, some of the wires now on the 737. So yeah, this is, this is pretty dicey. I mean, congrats to you um, there on this one. Nanya Biz, this is a really nice look. Lower highs pretty much throughout the day here. We continue to fall below here at that early low, that $200.60 area. Let's see what we do at 200 because I know this could be pretty interesting. I remember one time Sharif was like, oh, let's look for that 200 bounce on Boeing when we were first falling. And Boeing was like, what 200 bounce? And immediately continued to fall. So Boeing, th this key level could be nothing for Boeing, right? So we're going to have to see what we do here on BA. But downside, downside, downside. Thank you so much, Vic, for the 199 Super Chat. TES, uh, T -E T E S C E T F thoughts inverse leverage tech short uh, inverse and leverage both already I'm kind of like because those are not things I you know what I mean to me that's there's already a lot of risk associated there right but let's see what happens with this are we thinking like uh, I don't know what time frame I think on the 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 daily this is a nice look we had that chop and churn here oh, yeah. it's actually really rangy that two seven sixty two to seven seventy for a little bit then we pop we fly up with the viciousness up to that seven seventy six. Let's look at the daily on this guy, see what kind of action. Oh, we're getting P Pro 8 saying no, Adara. So we'll pull that back up. That's okay. Um, P Pro 8, shout out to P Pro 8. Sometimes she's a little finicky, but she will work. Uh, let's look up T E C S A M on the daily. Scary stuff on that says Freddie the Friendly Guy. Yeah, I honestly, like I said, I find these leverage ETFs. Not really my type of move. Yeah, as you can see, I guess we're leverage short tech ETF. This one very much has had a bit of a downside Bro. move lately. We did have a move up, obviously, on that market setup we had here, or market sell-off we had here, sorry. But yeah, generally on the daily, lower highs, lower lows. But nice look on the intraday. Just, just a very intense movement, though. Definitely not my type of trade. But I would say... Honestly, if you're asking about thoughts, not advice, just my take on the chart, I wouldn't know where to get in here. There's no dip, there's only rip. So it's a little bit hard for me to say where to get in on a name like this. Well, That's my take. Can I make a suggestion? Please do. I would love a dip at this <gasps> consolidation top. That is a clear area of resistance. It could not break that 770 or like 775-ish. If it was to come down there, I would wait for a confirmation that it did retest that level, Adara, and that it held that level. And then if you want to be extra cautious, if I can show her chart, Ram Ram, uh, to wait for that curl back up on the back end, as my friend Neil likes to say, to confirm that it is going to hold, because that's a bull flag, right? Yeah, that makes sense. That's a bull flag, and then we want to see that continuation uh, back up. But if it doesn't continue that bull flag and it comes back and retesting, I'm looking for that top end consolidation range to hold as support. Thank you very much. That's just my opinion, though. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. not advice, just her takes on the chart. And thank you for your perspective on that as well, because you are very much more of a momentum person, so I appreciate your take on something that's moving Always. Momentum. Adara, do you know while you were dropping hot lines that we broke 18-1 on the Fuge? I we did We are on the way down. Can somebody hit the down arrow or something like that, Katina, man? Thank you so much. There it is. There's the red, baby. It is a down day. Shout out to all the perma bears, not the least of which Big Caliber Debt Print Factory. What are you doing today, Dan? I haven't heard too much from you, brother. I know that you're probably salivating at this move on the Fuge too, uh, probably printing on it as well. Look at this move down. We didn't even hold up at 18.1, baby. It didn't even bother staying. Like it, there was no stop sign. It was all gas, no brakes through 18.1. We're headed down. I mean, like, look. They're, they're sure there's technical, their price action levels that we could look at to say, okay, well, we hold up here. But quite frankly, the way that we blew through 18.1 like it didn't even matter makes me feel like we are headed to 18,000. I looked over at the Katina man and I said, we're headed to 18. You know what he said to me? He's like, exactly. Uh, it's too early to be dip buying right now. And I happen to agree, we just made newer lows on the future. Here we go to the downside, 18068. This is headed down. So big move down on the futures here. NVIDIA. New low a day, Whew. breaking through 880 like it doesn't even matter. We're moving dollars, two dollars at a time here, dipping through this consolidation bottom and down in 871 we go. We're on our way to a resistance, or sorry, support level two on the pivots. That's hanging out at around 865. 
What I want to see, though, is if NVIDIA makes it back into 885, which is obviously this consolidation bottom here on the five minute look, do we find resistance there? Initially, it was an, eight, an area of support between 880 to 885. Do we now use that area? Formally support now as resistance if we were to come back up into that area. Questions to be asked here to see, but it's been a big boy move down on video. We're down over a hundred dollars from the top. 974 Katina Man was the top. We printed 870 77 exactly the low of day, a hundred and four dollars from one end to the other on this monster name. Completely, I would say, normal within the realm of uh, to be expected here, given how much it's run up in the previous uh, days and weeks uh, leading into today. Obviously, I don't know anything about when uh, there could be a new catalyst for NVIDIA. We're going to wait to see maybe some hyperscalers report more, more purchases, this, that, and the other. Anything could help propel this stock right back up. We don't know. But watching it on the day, it is big boy down. And so is everything, really, except Apple and Google at the moment. Let's look quickly here at these small cap gappers to see which ones are still in play and which ones we should basically, you know, just forego altogether. Well, LRTN below VWAP, PB, PBM below VWAP. The only one that's tradable for me is SGD. And this one was the Holt factory earlier on. It's now found support for whatever reason at that $2 area. Uh, it was umpteen amount of times that we came into two bucks and held up trading at 208 right now. But cognizant of these consecutively lower highs off that 269, nice top, and uh, right back down to two bucks. This could flat bottom break through 190 if it gives up the ghost at VWAP. This could really flush here. Um, SGD, if it doesn't hold up that two or generally that VWAP, we could easily make it down into like that buck. Uh, Buck 20, buck 17, where the low of day, technically the low of day is it was lower in the pre-market, obviously. But SGD, the only one that's actually tradable, but looking awfully weak as well. Typically, these small cap gappers don't give a you-know-what about what the future or the MAG-7 is doing. They march to the beat of their own drum, but today, everything looking awfully weak. I'm looking at my scanner up top to see if anything's moving at the moment, and I notice that AIRE also it might be tradable here in small cap world. So let's have a look at AIRE. What the hell is this company? Real, real flat tech? Oh. Okay. $80 million market cap, float 6.7 million. So 6.7 million uh, float. So uh, not micro, but not big either. It's doing the dance with no pants right now above that VWAP 170 level. Uh, I, this one is tradable. Okay, in my opinion. My opinion is tradable. It has a discernible pre-market high at 6.50 a.m. at that 197. It did break it through 202, but albeit by like five pennies because it got from 197 to 202. That's not really what I'm looking for here. But if this one presents us with opportunities and it's going now, it's pumping up again, AIRE could be the small cap gap or du jour that is tradable on the midday, Adara. Yeah, I mean, there's been so much, as Comp SRX was saying, all jazzed up in shorts. And I mean, yeah, I think the shorts have been the look. And I say I like that as someone that. in a long, yeah, I really like that as well. Um, so shout out to you, Comp SRX, great participant in the chat, as is everyone. We have a great chat over here. But Alibaba, I want to talk about, because this is the one long I'm still in, but it's also not NQ. Do you know what I mean? We're having such a hard time. I just want my little area here at this um, 7305s. I don't know if we're going to get this. I might have to get some of this out a little bit earlier than anticipated. But I am holding a piece for my dream around that VWAP area. I will say, though, I have no reason to get out of this trade because we're still making higher highs, higher lows um, within this range. I just think we're seeing a little bit of a slower time getting there. That's okay. As Sharif says, pack the patience. And that's something I'm, I'm actually trying to work on doing. So there we go. That's my take on this one. Uh, life full saying NVIDIA swinging, going swinging so fast. Yeah, that, that's not what I ever read on because that's crazy. But um, yeah, this, this Tesla move going down a little bit here. I have a, a profit taker set here at 175.20. I got involved in this short because I like my ranges. Look at how we had this, um, this kind of bottom earlier of this area, that 175.60. I watched us reject this a couple times. And I said, Adara, you want all the smoke. I got in, add a little bit when we pop back up and rejected. So I don't mind my average here, 175.57s. We're taking some of this out if we get to 175.20s uh, because that was that area where we had a bounce twice. I'd love to get there. If we do, I will be taking a bit of profits, getting my beak a little bit damp, and then saving a piece here below. Uh, if we break below 175, I'd be pleased to sponge. 
Um, D. Westermeyer, 199 Super Chat. Thank you very much, my friend. D. Big D asks, biggest four-hour red candle in months on the NQ. Let's inspect. Let's bring in the side chart and have a look at the NQ. And then he followed up that question with, uh, regarding my uh, Super Chat, do you think that's significant? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So let's flip to the four-hour over here. So here's the four-hour. Oh, Look, um, D. Westermeyer, I don't want to put too much stock into one candle. I think that that's just prudent technical analysis. What I would look more for are key levels to get broken. Are we making lower lows or are we consistent in our trend, which is sequentially higher highs and higher lows? I think it's something to definitely keep uh, in mind that we have this big boy, Hwadunk, but also keep in mind that we're still three hours off the close. So any number of things can happen here, uh, not the least of which is we can retrace back into 18, to 18, whatever, 18, one and a quarter to kind of, uh, you know, make that big boy red candle over here a little bit smaller than what it looks like at the moment. So you, be, you bring up a valid point. But we're above the 50, we're making consecutively higher highs and higher lows. We haven't, like, what I would say is to be on the lookout for either a break of 17.825, because that's a bit of a trough, or the trough that's really standing out on my chart, which is this double bottom at 18.375, or probably better, better level is 18.4. Sorry, 17.4, excuse me, 17.4, this level over here. So I would say if we were to break that level of consistently, Higher highs and higher lows, that would be where I was really worried. But to put too much, put a lot of stock into one candle, kind of not my move, but definitely, I do agree with you, something to be uh, cognizant of, no question about it. All right, let's go and have a look here at AIRE. I set up a dip trade at a buck and uh, three quarters here to get long on this uh, name, and maybe we can hold something above VWAP. VWAP on my chart is a buck 68, so. That'll be my line in the sand. It breaks below VWAP at a buck 67, give or take. That'll be my the end of my trade. Looking to weasel my way into this name. I gotta tell you though, uh, before anybody starts punching long AIRE, I gotta tell you, I'm it's I'm displeased with the volume. It's a dollar and three quarters, and it's only done 20 and a third million shares on the day. It should have done more given that we're at 106 p.m. today, so the volume is a little suspicious. Now we're long on this name. Let's see if we get bamboozled, Adara. My line in the sand is gonna be VWAP. Yeah, this has been this has been a crazy market. Yeah, these small caps. I was actually, let's look at AIMD because I aimed for a long on this one earlier and my hopes were dashed. So happy I got it where I did because we just fell um, way lower here in AIMD. I liked the range on this. We just fell below that low I had to get out. Um, it's okay, yeah, we didn't lose too much because I was, I was trying to be fairly conservative with the position sizing, but that's the deal on AIMD. I also took out uh, a little bit of this Tesla here as we get ready for the lesson. Once again, I'm comfortable keeping the rest of it in though because we're having such a hard time getting above that 175.60. Uh, if we get above 176, that's where I'll probably have to get out. But also, thank you again to Vic for the 499 Super Chat. Thank you team for your analysis. The whole team just helped me make five years, or sorry, two year salary this week. I just opened my own investments Jeez. company. Thank you team. Thank you so much. Um, that's that's well, wild and thank you for uh, your support. Maybe we can ask them if they want to share. Right? <laughs> With the week uh, I've been having, I'm gonna need all the support. No, I'm kidding, of course. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a hard week for trading. Uh, Adara, have you seen the full state of Hwadunk? that Meta has been in on the day. <gasps> Meta yes. is in a full state of tank. And uh, I couldn't be more pleased um, because, well, I, I really like the name and I'd like to be able to pick it up at better levels, quite frankly. Let's see, it's only dropped $21 off the top. 523.57 high, Adara. And now it looks like we may be on the way to that $100 level at 500. Um, we'll see, it's a 502, 25 low a day, and it's been incrementally lower highs, lower lows, been a downward channel galore on this name. It's been a great look for anybody who's wanted to take this name short. Uh, let's see what this one does on the day, but Meta, awfully weak. Now, Apple holding up above 172, so Apple, is the counter-cyclical name on the day. Look at that move up on Apple. Here we go again. 
on Apple, blowing through 172, coming back into that 172 and a quarter again. It's been dip trade central on AAPL. It's been incrementally higher highs and higher lows on this name. And if you've been wanting to go long, like me, I have this sick compulsion to want to go long rather than just take what Mark is presenting me short. It's been this name. We're positive on Apple on the day. It's back up into 172 and a third, looking for that 172 and three quarter HOD that we put in at the top there. And the aggressive buying nature of this name, and it's been very aggressive both ways. At times when it's sold off aggressively, it's been equally as aggressive in the sell off as it has been in the move up. So Apple, big boy today on the day, but obviously six day losing streak Probably going to end up breaking that streak today as it looks like it will close uh, positive. All, we don't know how much, though. It's up 1.9 at the moment. Uh, let's see what else people are uh, talking about here. Uh, yeah, really nothing directed towards me. So we'll just let that one go. I'm looking for more trades. Let's see what the setup here. Uh, we're like four pennies in the money on AIRE. Nothing to write home about. Looking for that move up. Uh, through the break over here. My first beak wetter is going to be at a buck 86, and then we're going to see if we can test that $2 deleverage here through the break of this crest. We know that we have resistance on AIRE at that 186, 185 level, owing to this crest over here, which rejected 186, and then yet again over here. So if you want to de risk a little bit, uh, de risking in front of this level would be prudent, and then allowing whatever you have left. To, to possibly run, that's just the way I trade them. You know, you may do it differently and better, but a good look there. I also want to mention META here. I was just, you Oof. know, talking badly about this name, Adara, but look at this hammer candle, well, possible hammer candle that's putting in over here with another five minute candle to make a new high. So dipping off 502 and a half, and now it's up to 504 and a third. I'd say look for resistance at that 506 area, owing to this trough over here former area support should flip to be resistance. In addition to that, it's been really rejecting off that 10 period EMA in the same way that the Apple has been bouncing off the 10 period EMA. So if you do make it up to that 506, 505 and a half level, you'll have two reasons to get short on Meta. This trough over here at 506 and the fact that the 10 EMA which off which it's been rejecting is also at that 505 and a half, 505 and two thirds. So I'll be looking short there on META for rinse and repeat. Yeah, rinse and repeat is right. The other level I liked at META, and I saw this and I, I was considering going short and I didn't, just because we were at low of day there. Look at that 508 in the change area. We bounce off that and then we hold it, resistance support, type of stuff I like. Um, and the type of stuff I learned as well here sitting with you, Sharif. So yeah, I just thought that was a, a cool level I wanted to note. Also, awesome. I added to Tesla because I said I'd be watching that 176 rejection. We rejected with a viciousness, with a swiftness, we went, so I said, I do not like the face I made there, by the way. I'm so sorry for that face. Oh, my Lord. Um, but then we rejected, and, and yeah, it's been, it's been pretty cool. We're going to have to wait and see. That's a weird way to describe a trade. But I'm happy with this right now. I am getting worried, though, because I've noticed the bottom of this range used to give you about, like, 175.40 to 175.65. The bottom's getting higher. So I do not like that. Uh, we're getting a bit of a, a lift there in that, that Tesla, so I don't like that. I would like it to get a little bit lower. I'm setting this for around 175.50 to exit. Cut this lot loose because I think this is getting a little bit like we could be moving a bit higher here on TSLA. Thanks again to Vic for the 499 Super Chat. I enjoy watching all the different perspectives. It has educated me and also kept me informed. Seeing you guys keep your, keep your cool helps you stay relaxed. I don't know if I always keep my cool. I do find I get a little bit excited by the markets. But yeah, thank you so much. We also appreciate all the support here in the chat. But yeah, let's see here what we do at this um, 176. We're rejecting a little bit here. So I think I'm gonna have to let uh, Tesla do her little thing, 21. Um, and let's get on here with the lesson. Um, let's do it. Yeah, if Tesla misbehaves, I might have to deal with her, but I think she should be good for right now. Um, so let's talk about understanding short squeezes. Uh, let's go to the beginning of the slideshow. Hamp it. <laughs> I think he's trying to she was trolling me because there was a video and I did his attempt on the pamp it in the social media video. I'm not trolling video. you, actually. I actually I, like the way you do really? it. By the way, I'm I like not the way you do you. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, because mine is my own way. That's true. Right? So, yeah. That's, anyway. But, but yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, we go just. Go for it. Yeah, there we go. Different ways of saying pamp it. But for now, we're not going to say pamp <laughs> We're going to say damp it because we're talking about minimizing risk while short selling. So, let's do this. Um, 
Let me find the, I have way too many notes open. Yeah, so let's talk about different ways to, to deal with the inherent risks carried by short selling because there are some risks that uh, make this strategy a little bit dicier. So you need to make risk management a crucial, a crucial aspect of your strategy. Uh, here are three key approaches to minimizing risk with short selling, which include, or sorry, five, which include utilizing stop loss orders. These orders will help you automatically get out of dodge and exit your position if the stock price reaches a predefined level. So this will help you limit uh, your potential losses if the price unexpectedly rises against your prediction. So if we suddenly fly up, your stop loss is like, no, I got you. We're, we're out. We're going to leave now. Uh, also, placement can be really important. So you want to set the stop loss over order, sorry, above or over a previous swing high or short-term resistance level. So one thing, Sharif, so that I like to use is if you're going to use higher highs and higher lows to get you in, or I guess in a, a short, you'd be using lower highs, lower lows, that might be the same level you want to use to get you out. So if you're noticing, oh, we're making a higher high, uh, that might be where you have to set your stop loss, right? So just, just some food for thought there. And it does give you some, a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of breathing room for price fluctuations while preventing excessive losses. And where you set your stop and how you set it depends also on what type of trade you're in. So if you're in a small cap gapper, or if you're in you know, the NQ, if you're in these trades with larger spreads, that might be where you want to give yourself a little bit more wiggle room because those stocks tend to be a little bit more wild. Position sizing discipline is also really important. You don't want to allocate too much of your position to eat uh, your capital to a short position because these ones uh, are a little bit riskier by nature. So this strategy, allocating a smaller position or a smaller portion of your position uh, can limit the overall impact on your portfolio if the trade happens to go against you, which it can't. Consider also using a fixed percentage of your capital per short position or dynamic approach that adjusts the allocation based on the perceived risk of each trade. So for this type of trade, I'm going to take X amount. I'm going to take X size position. And, and over this one, I'm going to take Y. You know what I mean? So just being cognizant and taking a little bit of a different approach depending on the trade sometimes. Conducting thorough research is also key. Uh, you want to analyze the company's fundamentals to look at potential weaknesses uh, that could justify a price decline. So that might include financial statements, competitive landscape, a management team, and also industry trends. But with that in mind, you also need to evaluate the overall condition in the market. So that helps you understand broader economic factors, sector performance, and, uh, and potential news catalysts that could impact the stock price. Especially like a day like today, if everything's down, that might be okay, it might be a good time to short because it's not one thing moving counterintuitively, everything moving to the downside. Last but not least, compare to technical analysis. Oh, sorry, combine, yeah compare or combine the strategies, right? You want to look at fundamental analysis and technical analysis in tandem so that you can identify potential entry and exit points based on historical price and volume data. You also want to be, though, uh, mindful of costs and borrowing fees. You want to, because short selling does involve borrowing shares from a broker, that can incur borrowing costs and fees, and these costs can eat into your potential profits. So factor them into your calculations, and also compare borrowing rates. As Sharif was talking about, there's certain brokers that will be like, oh, we're good for short selling, right? That may, might be the type of broker you want to keep your eye on, because that'll help you keep some of these fees in check with a strategy that can be a little bit more expensive, and not all brokers necessarily are going to have a great short setup. You also want to understand short squeezes. This is really important, a huge thing for me to learn when I first started interacting with the markets is the importance and the relevance of a short float. How do these work? Basically, a short squeeze can occur when a sudden surge in buying pressure uh, forces the short sellers to buy back their shares at a higher price to cover the positions, and that can lead to the market running up with a viciousness, and it can amplify your loss significantly if you're in a short. You want to monitor the short interest of the stock that you're considering shorting. So high short interest can indicate a higher potential for short squeeze. Shout out to Trade Ideas. They have short floats, and we use them to look at short floats. And also, uh, certain names are going to have a higher short float, and that can be a little bit more iffy when it comes to short fleas. So we saw Carvana run up on that RBC Capital upgrade. That could have been influenced by the fact that that name has a larger short float. So Carvana, we have a positive catalyst. That thing vrooms to the upside, pun very intended and also very bad. Um, but also, last but not least, Sometimes you might want to consider alternate strategies like buying put options, and those can help offer limited downward risk while also allowing you to profit from a price decline if you're feeling a little bit bearish or short-minded that day. You also, a couple things to remember here. Minimizing risk in short selling requires discipline, thorough research, and a well-defined strategy. If you have all these together, you can come up with better short strategies. Also worth noting, you only... Uh, Make sure that you're only investing what you can afford to lose as short selling. Losses can be unlimited and they can be larger and hit you a bit harder than if you're losing it along. 
You also want to prioritize risk management above all else in all trades, but especially these slightly riskier uh, short sells. Also, um, yeah, sorry, my voice again is a little bit um, it's a little bit rough right now, so I do apologize for my voice. Also, I like Donzel saying she's punny. I saw <laughs> I that. Yeah, I, I like that one too. That was uh, a little on the nose, but that's uh, that's, that's what, what makes we do it funny. Here, yeah, here. exactly. <laughs> Uh, Neil Sharif, right on cue, was just letting uh, a firm buy now. Really? Okay, okay. Uh, let's find out what a firm is doing. By the way, I've set up a possible short on META. Uh, it'll have to make its way up into my level, though. Mark's smashing something back there in the uh, in the green room or the podcast room, I should call it now. A firm. Oh. Buy now, pay never. So a firm is on the way down. And the Katina man says, that's right, baby, because he's been saying buy now, pay never since 2020, 2021, when this monster was making its uh, way up. But today, it, just, it, it got a nice pump today, all right? Initially, it closed out yesterday at that 36 and a half or thereabouts, pumps up right in that 40 level. And then like the overall market, lower highs, Lower lows now well below VWAP, trading at that 38 and a quarter, trying to hold up about 38 and a half. I don't buy this unless it comes into 37 and a half. There's that pre-market top there that we uh, we could use as a level of support. We'll have to wait and see, but interesting look there on AFRM. I'm long AIRE. Let's find out what this bad boy is doing before I tell you on this meta trade that I'm trying to weasel my way into. We're obviously having now resistance at that buck 80 on AIRE, that's the fourth time we've rejected at that level. I'm looking at the book here, and I don't see enough size at 180 to justify four rejections. Hence, therefore, I can put an educated guess that there is likely uh, a hidden seller or an iceberg at 180. Here comes 180 again. Do we break two penny spread opening up a little bit here? We'll watch to see if that 180 can give way. And, um, to let us know whether or not there's actually an iceberg right there. So here we go, we're getting 180 prints. Do we break? No, not now. Google is aggressively on the way down, but I'm not gonna get to that in a sec. I just want to talk about this meta short that I have set up here to defend. Number one, the 10 period uh, EMA off which it's been rejecting multiple times as well as that trough, that consolidate, not consolidation, that, uh, that move down which was obviously a level of support initially now acting as a bit of a re uh, resistance level. So the problem with setting up this trade based on a moving average and a price level is the moving average is constantly moving. It's dynamic, right? So whereas you put in your trade and the moving average was over here and there was confluence between uh, the price action and the moving average at 506 or 505 and a half, now the moving average is hanging around at 505 even. And so that presents a bit of a problem. You're going to have to decide which level you want to use, but it may not make it up there. It looks like Meta now consolidating at south of 504, now in that 503 low areas on META. So we'll continue to look for some shorts here, but it looks like Google is uninterrupted to the downside, baby. Only nary a green candle in this huge move down ever since 1120. It's now 12.20. It's been a big boy move down for Google, down almost three bucks off the top there. We'll continue to see if we get that whole U-shaped retracement back into 134 and a half. <laughs> I liked that. No, I didn't. Right, right. I mean, you summed it up. That's what it looks like. Yeah, it does. looks like a big you-know-what you, right? So um, <laughs> right, we got to keep it PG, but you, people, people, people get it. People get it. Uh, Jay Lee, it's accumulating. It should be. It should pop into 190, says Jay Lee. He's talking about AIRE because uh, that's a trade we're involved in. There we go through the break of 180, baby. We'll take some out at 188. Pump it. Uh, let's see if we can get into two. Jay Lee took this one south of where I took it. I took it 175. Jay Lee's long 171. Shout out to you, Jay. This is pumping, baby. Here comes two. We're going to look for two on AIRE. Please as punch. Please as punch is what we want to be. Oh, no way. Ram Ram just informed me that Kylie Jenner's kid is named, like literally, AIRE Air. Well, that's interesting. I thought it was Wolf. Oh, no, she changed it. I forgot she changed it. Hold okay. on, what? She changed the kid's name? Yeah, so it was Wolf, and then some other influencer was like, I named my kid Wolf. 
Okay, well, that's not what story yet. Remains clarifying. It was never confirmed, uh, but there was like a lot of speculation. And some, yeah, another influencer also named her kid Wolf around really? the same time. Not was a whole thing. But air also goes better with stormy anyway, right? If we're talking, how am I supposed to breathe with no air? Oh, I forgot about that song. Come on. All right, we just wet our beak at 96 is on AIRE. Still negative on the day, but it's Friday, so I'm happy. And uh, we just took a good trade. So we're going to continue to uh, get the reps in, as the Katina man likes to say. Or I don't know if he says that, but I'll just pretend he says that. Um, but we're, we're getting reps in. That's all we're doing right now. So I'm pleased as punch about this trade. Uh, didn't wait for that $2 area to come in. Wet our beak there a little early, but that's, uh, that's all right. Guys, Meta is on the way down again. Look at this move down on Meta. Now we just broke through 502, Katina, man. 501.86. Meta is on the way to 500, guys. I won't be convinced any different. This thing is awfully weak. It didn't even come into my, my oh, man. 501 low a day now. Should have got short. I wanted that price level. I wanted to stick, I wanted to do the right thing. Former area of support flips the resistance. It didn't make its way up there. So weak is it on the day. Can't even retrace back into resistance. New low day, 501. I think 500 incoming. Yeah, this, this market has been so much. Also, thank you everyone for the support for Ram Ram. Everyone's like, Ram oh, Ram Ram's a great nickname. We love Ramin over here sharing those um, those facts. I forgot that was the name of Kylie Jenner's kid. So, so thank you for sharing that, Ramin. We love, you know, Ramin, Fabian, Mark, Randy, Rob, everybody in production, Thanks. what a great team we have here. Uh, but also, you know, just asking for a friend. Tesla, can you make up your mind, please? Uh, so I got involved here in this short. I scalped a part of the short. I was pleased as punch. This was a lot of having an initial area I liked. We didn't get there, so I looked at the book, and I took about eight pennies less than I wanted to. That was cool. Then I added, because I noticed we were holding that. I was waiting for a 176 rejection. We got it. I added to the position. Then we started doing something really interesting. I said, you know what, Adair, if we get to that 176.30 area that we had earlier, that'd be a higher high. I'm going to have to say bye-bye. We have not gotten there. But Tesla's getting to a massive point of indecision. Instead of the candle of indecision, as Sharif often talks about, we're having like just an indecision nation or indecision <laughs> station, I don't know, over here in Tesla. It's also worth noting, I'm usually not in trades this long, especially in mega caps. I've been involved in Tesla since 1 o'clock. This has been 26 Ooh. minutes of me in Tesla, which is not actually that long when I say it out loud. Okay. But for me, it kind of is. And it's feeling like I spend a lot of time and energy looking at Tesla. I was in Tesla the entire lesson, which was very stressful for me because I had to keep looking and being like, Tesla, you good, bro? You good? But yeah, it's actually been really chill. And it keeps rejecting 176.30. What's making me a bit nervous, though, is it seems like we might be switching to 176 as an area of support. So I'm going to have to wait and see what happens here. Um, if we break 176.30, I'm getting out. That's the long and short of it. And I am trying to get a little bit more patient. Also, that was a pun, the long oh. and short of it. I didn't even mean to do oh, that. Oh, good Patrick call. was saying that yesterday. He's like, oh, you should have said the long and short of it. And it's like, I don't, I don't plan them. You know what I mean? If they come to me, they come to me. So I, I just saw that now, and I was like, that's pretty funny. I like but yeah, that. shout out to Patrick. And I do think that this um, this Tesla is about ready to throw me out of the roadster, zero to 100, real quick. Shout out to Drake. But I do think that this, uh, this was a fun ride, and I'm really proud of myself for just staying in. Uh, someone in the chat was saying to me, I think it was eclectic passion, saying, you know, we're, like patience is really important in trading and they were saying that that's something they always are thinking about and being cognizant of and I'm really trying to work on that as well. So that's why I stayed because I still had the reason to stay. Um, oh, <laughs> I mean, I love this. Tesla can't be meanie to you today. It's, it's, it knows it's International Women's Day. Thank you, Ramin. And happy International Women's Day to you, Ramin, and everybody in the chat as well. And it looks like Tesla actually agreed because Tesla did back off a little bit after that super chat. So Tesla respects Ramin. So I like that. Tesla does not respect my feelings or anyone else's. <laughs> but Tesla's like, Ramin wants me to go down? Cool. Uh, but yeah, no, in all seriousness, um, yeah, shout out to that and just hanging out and, and kicking it in this trade for right now. Alibaba still working. I still have one last beak wetter. I, I said, I'm going to watch what we do at VWAP. If we fail VWAP, I'm going to take some of this out at VWAP. Oh, we're at, oh, we got here sooner than I thought. <laughs> Let's see here. If we pop back up, I'll be interested in taking that uh, 73.20. If we keep rising, we're going to be aiming for the big boys here I at like 73.50. Uh, yeah, what a day. What are you looking at? I'm looking at Google. I'm taking Google short here, maybe for a 135 touch. I mean, it's kind of in no man's land, or a, 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 we'll, we'll throw it out there. It's Women's Day, baby. It's in no woman's land right now. <laughs> Ram Ram's hitting the bang buttons. My hands are clear. It's not me doing it. Um, guys, uh, we're kind of like in, yeah, yeah, we're, we're in nowhere lane. Except, except 
there are these institutional level prints here at 8 a.m. that could halt this descent. Now, if you're a believer in, the, in these institutional level prints and what they signify, a lot of people have theories about these 8 a.m. prints. I don't happen to subscribe to any of them, but if you do, we're right there right now, so we could possibly find uh, some support here. But what I'm looking for is a move into the 200 period moving average on the five, which right now on my chart is a buck, 135 bucks. If we can make a move in and around there, I'll look to wet my beak on some profits. Dan Emmons says, been, I have been shorting the NQ all day since 18420. Shout out to you, Dan. You must be up a plethora of money today. And I could not be happier for you as you are one of the OGs, definitely in the chat. Travel Buddy, is good to buy NVIDIA now? Look, my friend, no financial advice here. What I would say is look for confirmation that the bottom has come in. It may not be in one day, right? Like we may come Monday and NVIDIA may sell off again. Wait for confirmation before you end up jumping in the trade uh, on NVDA. It is not... Um, a steady mover, it is a volatile monster, and it will uh, rip your face off if you let it. So uh, here we go down on Google, baby. All right, so we're now we're printing on this uh, little uh, trade over here about a whole 15 pennies in the money uh, on this trade, please. <laughs> Athena <laughs> man's trolling me. <laughs> he's like, we'll take it on, on this day. Yeah, yeah, he's not trolling. That's nice of him. Shout out to the Katina man, baby. Uh, on the way down on Google, looking for something in the vicinity of a buck thirty, or sorry, uh, one thirty-five there or uh, thereabouts. We'll see what we get here with Google. Um, what else is happening over here, Adara? Eighteen oh five oh. Let me just wet my beak here. Um, I'm gonna sit over here. Uh, 18050 on the Fuge has been holding up, the, or not exactly that level, but it's been above resistance or support, excuse me, level one, which is the red dotted line on my chart. If you use pivots, then this is your first support level. It's hanging out at 180 and a third. And we've been basically, you know, coming down into that level and bouncing back up. But look where the closing prints are. They're all at that half point level, 50 point level, excuse me, 18050 is where all the closing prints live on the futures chart right now, but it is still putting in lower highs, lower lows. I'm not trying to call a bottom here, don't get me wrong, but what I'm trying to say is we're in a consolidative range. So if you want, I'm talking to myself here, maybe look for this consolidative range trade. We'll see if we can get anything on these futures trades, um, possibly here. All right, we wet our beak there, baby on some profits on Google, as this one, Adara, looks like it is headed to 135. Go down, Google. Nick Free, two euro super chat. Thoughts on Palantir, buy for long term? Look, dude, I don't even need to look at the chart for Palantir, I like the company. And uh, sadly, there's a lot of belligerencies happening in the world, all right? Things are heating up. Japan is rearming, Germany is rearming. We just took out Google at 135. Please punch about that trade. Japan is rearming, Germany is rearming. We know that there are several wars in the world, sadly. I don't think it really gets much better. Maybe the same conflicts don't subsist, but I think other conflicts take their place. In any event, I like Palantir, 100%. Not financial advice, I'm just talking about what I would do in my long-term account. I lack Ponte. I don't need to look at the chart. I've looked at the chart unteen amount of times. We wet our beak there at Google, 130, 130. I didn't think it was going to, 135. I didn't think it was going to come that fast, Adara. We got That's short crazy. 130, 135. Where did we get short? 135, uh, 31 or 30 or something like that. And then 135 came in like that. Please punch with this trade. What are you looking at? Um, I'm still in the Cybertruck, and I have to say, does Ramin have powers? Because she told Tesla to be nice to me, and Tesla actually has pretty much dropped since then. I mean, I'm sure there's other reasons, but I do think that maybe Ramin has some secret Tesla market powers we don't know about. Just wanted to put that out there. But yeah, no, I mean, still happy with this. Like I said, uh, we're still, I, I wish that we'd be like a little less into that. Pardon? No way. Her oh. friend works for Tesla in San Fran. That's crazy. Interesting. What did I they do, Ram Ram, if you don't mind my asking? Software engineer, which is huge. It's Obviously, really the entire cool. car is a computer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is 
Uh, yeah, really interesting. That makes it even uh, funnier. But yeah, so, or even like, and more cool. But yeah, so this Tesla, I would like us to get a little bit farther down from that 176, but I am still in this trade. Also, Alibaba, hello, ma'am. Oh, I accidentally pulled up the entire chart. Thank you again to Z Trades for being like, uh, talking about this range. I think we might be a little bit stagnant at this earlier area of resistance, so I think I'm gonna take everything out here. But I have to say, I was pretty happy with this trade. And um, you know what? I, I can't complain. I have to say it, pleased as punch. So there we go, we took this out. Uh, maybe we could have gone higher, but this is just, you know, my type of trade and I, I'm really happy I left. I did see, I wanted to see what kind of resistance or chop and churn we'd be seeing here at that level. I saw a little bit and I didn't have any more beak wetters left. So there we go, pretty happy with that. No complaints from me. Also, Vic, thank you so much for the 499 Super Chat. Just became a member, love you guys. NASDAQ broke 18.1. If it breaks 18,000, can we expect a massive sell-off based on analysis? Can you say that again? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, NASDAQ broke 18.1. Okay. If it yep. breaks 18,000, can we expect a massive sell-off based on analysis? Um, you know what? Uh, we have to watch and see what it does. I mean, it's a major break, 18,000, but it's not like we haven't broken it before. We've been doing the dance with 18,000 for a few weeks now once we initially broke it. I wouldn't put it in such absolute terms. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I would look for a key break of a price level. Let's look at the four hour. Uh, D. Westermeyer wanted me to have a look at the four hour on the NQ earlier to analyze that big boy uh, uh, red candle. And now we're gonna look at it again. So what I wanna say to you is this. Um, who is that person again? Uh, Vic, um, thank you, Vic. So Vic, what I would say is, I don't wanna put a line in the sand at 18,000. Look what we did here with 18,000. We broke above 18, we got to 18.1, we tanked. We went back to 17.5. Broke above 18, rejected 18, made a lower low this time, 17373. Then we broke above 18 and we did the dance here with no pants at 18, a little bit above, a little bit below, and then we really blew away 18 once we at uh, the end of February there and got into 18375. And then we dip again below 18 at 17.5. And then we made another high and another all-time high. So what I say to you is. Don't put a line in the sand just because it's 18,000. What I would say to you is keep your eye out for that lower low and lower high. That's when you know the winds of change might be coming when you have, like for example, this high over here, we end up getting a lower high and we also get a lower low. So you draw your line in the sand with respect to this trough over here or with respect to this trough, whichever one you want to base it on. But look for the trend of higher highs and higher lows to end, rather than saying, no, nope, my line in the sand is 18,000, and if we break 18,000, then I know, you know, the trend may be changing. No, well, look what we did over here. We broke 18,000 a bunch of times, and we still made up higher highs and higher lows. So that's what I'd say to you on that, just my opinion. And uh, here comes 18,000, Adara. The future is in an absolute state of tank. And here comes 18,000. We're gonna see 18,000 awfully close. Low day right now, 18,000, 12 and a half. We could see 18,000 in minutes. Yeah, this this is crazy. And thank you so much for that sell. And that makes sense. Like, I, I appreciate you saying that because I think when I first started as well, there's this thing where you see like a key price point and you think, oh, that's definitely gonna be where it stops, right? And that's not always the case. Right, this right. can be guidelines instead of rules. So I appreciate you saying yeah. that about, about the, um, the NQ Bank. or the future. But also, Tesla, uh, apparently someone was saying that remains a stressful whisperer. I mean, maybe. Because the second you said that, oh, it's gonna go down, it did go down. Of course, I'm joking, there are other reasons going on here. I did take some profits here at 175.40s. I am really proud of myself because I have enough size in here that I have two more beak wetters left to go. I'm gonna get some of this out if we get to 175, because that was that previous area of resistance that I'm saving. That was loud. A piece for the dream. But because um, it's Tesla, the dream will be uh, We'll, we'll be probably half awake. We're not gonna be, we're gonna be sleeping with both eyes open. Or one eye open, I guess is the saying. If you're sleeping with both eyes open, are you sleeping? I don't know. But we're gonna keep an eye on this. Um, pretty pleased as punch uh, with how this trade is going so far. And mostly happy with my patience because I considered getting out of this before the lesson of the day because I was like, oh, or not, sorry, not Niels, before I was gonna do the, the lesson, right? Because I was like, what if this goes against me while I'm in it? And I'm like, Adara, we're, we're, we're still watching. Just keep an eye on it. Just be cognizant and then just see what happens. Um, so yeah, I think this will be, be an interesting look on Tesla. Pretty happy with it so far and, and just trying to learn a bit with every trade. I had a rough day yesterday. I'm still very down on the You're day both. to make it very clear. We had a loss on Lilly. Um, we were flat on Smith & Wesson. 
Uh, but yeah, I think really, again, just trying to, to kind of learn and to, to take each trade as its own trade. As Obi says, where's the next trade? Right. I said trade way too many times in the last sentence, but, but there you go. Thank you. I appreciate Adira, it. Adira, I mean, and we're on our way to 500 here on Meta in the same way that we're on our way to 18,000 on the future, Ram Ram. And uh, Meta is on its way aggressively into that 500. Technically, the low of day is still 531, but I think we see 500 imminently. That is a $23.57 sent move off the top dang is all i got to say to that i tried to get short meta i really did i did, i wanted the pullback it's a 500 dollars name i needed to have my placement right it didn't give me that exact pullback but it did another stair step and what i mean by stair step is like this you come down you consolidate you come down you consolidate look how many come downs and consolidates there are on here come down consolidate come down consolidate come down pop up a little bit Again over here, again over here, and then the move down. So I tried to get in at this 505 and a half area, general area. It gave me no such retracement. I mean, I had to, after the shellacking that I took yesterday, I had to be really diligent with where I get in um, on the day. And so I had to be a bit more prudent here. Otherwise, I could have been a bit more aggressive on MET and tried to punch at... Uh, in this willy-nilly area over here. But anyway, uh, when I got a Google, I'm actually really happy with this trade on Google because I got out of Google and then it popped right back up. So we ended up having an exact perfect exit on Google at that 135. It ends up holding that whole dollar, but this could flat bottom, well not flat bottom, it could give way if this half dollar area ends up being a top because it just retraced up into exactly 139.50. And here we go, right back down to 139.30. So weakness coming in here on Google. As Meta now is also, 500 is incoming, 511 low guys. So anybody who wants anything at 500 on Meta, it is coming in, it's coming in like right now. So keep your eye on that. Big Cal Burdett, AMD short against the month to date, anchored VWAP in the 207. 50 area, you weren't the only one, my friend, that was taking AMD short today. Plenty of people were looking at that. Shout out to you, Kyle, great call out there. Thank you, 20750 area, shout out to Big Kyle Burdett. But yeah, keeping my eye on Meta, keeping my eye on Google at 135. I also want to say that Apple needs somebody to let it know that the market's retracing today <laughs> because it's still near highs, Adara. It's like about 60 pennies off highs, still trading above that 172 area hasn't put in a lower low uh, quite yet this one the trend is still intact on this one if you zoom out you can see it a little bit better obviously off the highs there at 172.80 but fact of the matter is um, Apple the strongest of the names today Vic 199 super chat thank you Sharif for that explanation thank you thank you my friend and join us every day don't forget Adara and I and the big kahunas are on every day from 8 30 to 4 30 make sure to check out the market recap show. None today, though, because they shoot the pod. The pod will be available tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. And we're investing into this pod, by the way. Back there where my hand is, uh, you'll, you can't see it because there's the wall. But right there, there is a green room. We're converting that green room into a podcast room. So much are we committed to that whole brand there. We'll be bringing you more of that. Shout out to the Katina Man and the Brendo. It's gonna be really exciting. I love watching the podcast um, every every Saturday. Like I said, it's I, I like you know watching them in little pieces, and I think it's a really fun time. Um, we're getting accused of hearsay by um, Ramin. Shade on she, me. Eh? <laughs> yeah, we love. It's, Ram, it's all Ram. good fun. We it's all in jest. Right. We have we have a great time over Meta here. Meta broke. But oh, Meta broke. Yeah, five hundred. Five hundred. Meta Meta is now below five hundred. Adara and uh, doesn't look like it's stopping out here. Here comes the half dollar on META. 499.35 low of day. Meta, well, now it's above 500. I'm not going to be, you're not going to catch me taking uh, just resting orders on Meta at key levels, Dara. This is going to have to prove that it's going to curl back up, get in on the back end, as my friend Neil likes to say. Uh, otherwise, it's a continued short. Sorry to interrupt you. No, it's okay. Right now, I'm just watching Tesla like a scared baby deer. Um, so basically, what happened was I got out some of this at that 175. 39 area, got the rest of it at 175. Then we bounced at 175, and I said, Adara, 
I watched her a little bit, and I was like, maybe we'll come back down. I said, Adara, you can't stay here. We're literally pennies away from my fill. I said it at 175.17. We might have to adjust this because Tesla's bouncing here, and I do not want to be a part of this anymore. I've had quite enough smoke in the Cybertruck. Thank you very much. Um, let's see if we can get out here at uh, 22s because this is just not something I want to be a part of anymore. This is also kind of an earlier area of support, right? Which is why this is an area I wanted to be cognizant of. Are we out? We are pennies away. Uh, we should be out. We're not out. That's cool. Tesla's going to do her thing, 21. Let's see any chats we're getting here um, in the comments. Freddy the Friendly Guy was saying, oh, the longs all got reversed here. Yeah, very much so. Uh, it's been, went from long to short to all around. Shout out to, to Pedro as well our, from our social media team coming on here earlier, mentioning that apparently social media thinks there's going to be a market crash on, the, on March 11th. So that's kind of interesting. We got a little bit of a move down today, maybe in anticipation for that. So a little bit of a fascinating um, comment there with that in mind, given what the movement that we've seen today. Should have gotten out of this Tesla earlier. I was not scalpy enough. That's okay. We're just going to try to get here. Let's try around 40s. Um, but yeah, that's all right. Let's see what else this market is doing here. Yeah, there's the green candle on Tesla, says Freddie the friendly guy. Yeah, I am feeling the heat on that one. Let me tell you, I keep getting within pennies of a fill here. It's like the Cybertruck does not want me to leave. It's like what Sharif was saying earlier about Apple being like, nah, uh, uh, you have to stay here. That's what Tesla's doing. Tesla's like, Adara, you waited for so long for me, and now you want to go? Like, no. That's okay. Uh, I have the same thing with NVIDIA. I tried multiple times yesterday. I tried multiple times to get out, and I literally could not leave until I split my order into small pieces, and it was not a very big position. So I think sometimes these stocks get a little bit temperamental. That's okay. You've got to go with the flow. I really should have gotten out of this when I first started seeing that resistance or that support, I guess, around that 175.20. But that's all right. You live and you learn in these markets. Also, BABA, I got out of BABA because I was like noticing you know, maybe around that view up area we were slowing down a little bit. And we did slow down, and then Baba was like, oh, Adara, you shouldn't have left. Continue to pop up here again. But I'm still really happy with this range trade. Again, another example of me trying That's to get a bit comfortable trade. staying in trades for longer. Pardon? That's bottom wick. Yeah. Yeah. You should be really proud of Thank that Thank you trade. very much. That's bottom wick. Thank and you. And I see somebody's got three beak wetters now instead of two. Yeah. Someone's uh, adding to their position size. All right, Adara, Thank we you. got about 15 minutes left on the Can't show. Can't believe we only have 15 minutes left. I know. Left in the entire week. It's time to talk some Prem, baby. Big, big week in the Premier League this week because Liverpool plays Man City. And here we go. We have number two, Man City with 62 points. You have Liverpool with 63, and you have Arsenal chasing them with 61. So the top three teams separated by – look at that, Neil. Yeah, I, I can't read that. Who's, what's that team in first place <laughs> ahead of Arsenal? So I, I want to I let you know something. That considering – Oh, that's right. Yeah, what well, Man, we whooped you guys. You realize that, right? We whooped you guys. We took four points from you guys. You took one from us all season long, baby. Because Here we go. Let's, uh, let's chat a little bit about this right here, Neil. So, City plays Liverpool on Sunday. Arsenal, I think, plays Brentford or something like that Saturday. Considering Arsenal wins, which they should, we go top of the league and we gain on either Liverpool or City or both. Meaning, by the end of the weekend, if City and Liverpool tie, Arsenal could be first, or if Arsenal could be second. Either way, if we win on Saturday, we gain points on either City or Liverpool or both. And that's what I'm looking at here, right? And look at that goal differential, Neil. That's that big boy goal differential, 10 goal difference between City and Arsenal, we're chomping up on the heels, baby. We've, we've kind of set a bit of a barrier, a gap now. We're gapping up between fourth and third. Aston Villa, six points behind us, Adara. Um, there and well behind us on goal differential, about 23 goals behind us as well. So this is a big weekend for all my Premier League fans. Make sure Arsenal Saturday, and then you have the big game, City, Liverpool, Sunday afternoon, I believe, 12.30 it is. I'm pretty sure it's after church, so I'll be going to that. All right, Meta, above 500 again. What do we do here, Dara? Uh, what do we do? Let's look at Meta, and I was... Oh, I can't tell if that's rhetorical, but I'll answer it. I think with Meta, uh, we did have that little bit pop up here, and then we kind of showed a little bit the buyers over, buyers overwhelming sellers. Then we gapped up on the three-minute a little bit here. Now we're up at five. 
ones. We've noticed, I've seen a little bit of a rejection here in the 9 EMA. So if that was not a rhetorical question, I would say, let's see what we do with the 9 EMA. Because the meta, up to this point for me in the three minute, has been rejecting on the 9 EMA. So that's my look at meta. I, I don't know if that was rhetorical, but I think it'd be interesting what to see if we reject off that 9 EMA. I'd wait for probably another candle. I think you're bang on with see. that. Thank you. I think you're bang on with that. A bang on because it's been rejecting. Well, mine is the 10 EMA. Yours oh. is a nine big difference. Not, there's not much of a difference there, there. It's been hugging that magnetically as the OB, the one the Kenob likes to say. My question to you is, do we go long above 500? Do you think 500 holds at these levels? It's kind of a guess at this level. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing here to say, okay, well, this is a definable support level other than the fact that it's the $100 level. That's true, right? And I think the other thing too is- 501 now. Here I'd be go. watching to see what we do at 502.50. Absolutely. Because look at that double bottom there. Absolutely. Uh, that we, we didn't work as a double bottom, though, mind you. It, it continued to sell off. So let's see if support becomes resistance and at 502. At the bottom end of the consolidation, I happen to agree with you 100%. And I tried to get in there using that method at that 504, 505, sorry, 505 and a half area, which was this area over here. Ram, Ram, if I can show my chart, please. Uh, this area over here, I, dare, I tried to get in there and it didn't give me that opportunity. So I definitely agree with you. There could be another rinse and repeat short here if we end up topping out at this, the bottom end of this consolidation, consolidation range at 502 and a half. Good call on that. Meta though, finding a bit of a bounce here at that $500 level, albeit anemic at this point. It hasn't broken through any levels of air. Yeah, I mean, also, yeah, it's a, it's a cool one. That was, uh, yeah, happy we got to analyze that one because um, I think that's a pretty cool look. Also, Vic oh. saying with another super chat, 199 super chat, saying Manchester City, baby. I like Sharif even more now. <laughs> so there we go. That's Shout out fun. to you, my man. Th Shout out to Vic. You're killing it today, my man. Thank you very much for the 199 super chat, Vic. Uh, uh, solid there from you. I'm keeping my eyes posted. Uh, at, uh, at 500 here on um, META, I want to see what we do with this uh, $100 level. Sure, yeah, we got till 501 and change, but it's going to have to hold up 500 here. Start putting in some higher lows and higher highs, and maybe we'll get long into this name. There's a whole lot of range you can make back if you're if we mean revert here. A whole lot of range. We have 23, $24 worth of range, Katina man. Two, 523 and a half. 499.35 low. $24 worth of range today on Meta. So if there is going to be a mean reversion, we could see at least $10 here. I mean, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Whew. Do I, Ram Ram wants to know if I trade Meta better with medical assistance? With, me, with the Meta glasses. Meta glasses. I was like, medical wait, is that assistance. Actually what you heard? Like, yeah. I was wondering why you look so confused. <laughs> <laughs> with the meta Ram Ram, I'm still waiting for them to send me a replacement copy, and then we're gonna do like a whole behind the scenes thing here with the meta glasses. You guys can see what we're looking at, how Adair and I look behind the desk, how Brendo and I look at the whole view over here. When I'm behind the desk, we're we're looking to do something like that hopefully soon, Adair. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I thought I I thought I can't hear. That's pretty funny. I enjoyed that, but yeah, um, no, I, I get what you mean because it's like you're also hearing it through like a little like fuzz, right? So they press the you know, when Ramin and Fabian are talking to us through the earpieces, there's right. a little bit of static always yeah, yeah. too. So it makes sense. But yeah, the meta, oh, Angry Bear here with meta glasses oh. with the um, wine glasses. So I like that. Look at that. That's pretty interesting. One is men's day. Pardon? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, never mind. Uh, but yeah, so uh, get a real job, they say, uh, saying Tesla testing low of day. Oh. Yeah, it's Tesla. We are. I, I did get out of this a little bit early. You know, I need to practice more patience, P-A-Y-T-I-E-N-C-E. Uh, -E. Oh. Shout out to um, Bears versus Bulls for using that one sometimes. So. I like that. Yeah, this is... Um, it's a really nice uh, look there on Tesla, continuing to move down on the day. So I hope I spell patience right there. I do know how to spell it, but spelling out loud is always sometimes a moment. Um, but yeah, there you go. Dean Jennings, uh, thank you so much for the 199 super chat, saying Trump continues to invest in Bitcoin 100,000 100, soon, 100 emoji. Yeah, I mean, go Bitcoin. Let's look at coin, because I know coin I happen to agree, and I've made my, my opinion very uh, clear on that. I think we hit 100,000 on Bitcoin by the end of the year. Not that I'm invested in Bitcoin, though. But I, I, I really think we do. I, and, and the reason I feel that way is because we don't have artificial amounts of money being pumped into the economy like we did during COVID when this hit the uh, initial all-time high. Now it's happening more organically. Yeah, sure, ETFs 
are helping pump this up, but so is every industry. Every industry has ETFs, and every ETF has to buy the actual asset once they have funds come in. So I think this is absolutely organic, and I don't see any, com uh, I don't, I shouldn't say any, I don't see much of a comparison to 2021 when we had all this stimulus money coming into the economy, Adair. Yeah, it's a different context, yeah. and you're right, and so that also, that means there's maybe like more money to sustain that movement. I think right now, definitely the Bitcoin hype is, is higher than ever. Like, I was yeah. even telling Sharif over the weekend, I watched um, the pilot for the, the new Law and Order Toronto, mm -hmm. and it was about crypto. Bang. I mean, they handled it really weirdly, but it was about crypto. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting. Crypto was like such a part of, um, of the world and society, and so I thought that was really interesting. Also, I did look at Coinbase. This double top, this range we had for half a minute, 258 to 253. A little bit sad I missed out on it, but you know what? We can't get FOMO, especially when the day is over and I have six minutes left of my trading day. But yeah, Coinbase, what a look. Getting a nice little upgrade here. That one was on upgrades and downgrades. Shout out to Sharif for always preparing those. Um, and yeah, so, so nice look here for Coin on that upgrade. Also, um, there was something else in the chat that I was looking at um oh yeah also, yeah so versus bulls saying hashtag patience pays yeah shout out to you versus bulls killing it best moderator and also um i love the, the patience pay because that's something i'm trying to work on a little bit more and it's All right. also a fun pun smci apparently holding uh so let's look at that oh that's okay speaking of range again not anything i would do because smci and uh, we have a spread of $1.19 right now. But Jeez. look at this. I see what you mean by holding, Mahmood. We get to that double bottom of the 1100 We soar. I, like but I don't it. know if we soar. Right now we're running into a little bit of resistance at the earlier top of 115 But if you are a risk, I guess whatever the risk, of, uh, opposite of risk aversion, if you are someone who likes risk, this could be for you. But that's, that spread is getting wider the longer I look at this thing. This is a very dicey look, uh, but it's a nice little range here on super microcomputer, making a not so micro 4% move to the downside, down a cool $45. What are you looking at? And nothing. I was talking to people in the chat, and I also think Ethereum has a real shot here, guys. And Ethereum, uh, aside from just having a value that other people believe is the value, which is Bitcoin, the greater fool's theory, or whatever you call it, um, Ethereum has actually practical applications, contracts, right? We know these digital contracts, these smart contracts could be game changing for proof of ownership. If I sell something, a painting to Adara, right? And she wants to sell it to somebody else. There's a digital copy of that sale agreement, of the contract, of the certificate of authenticity and the whole works that's there on the blockchain that can't be bamboozled. So I do feel there is a practical application to that. And also the land title registry. Do you know how archaic it is to sell and buy real estate in some jurisdictions? Like, it's really archaic. So I think the blockchain helps streamline a lot of that. Now, you don't see it overnight. And there are bad case scenarios. Like, for example, the uh, Australian uh, stock market tried to switch their entire uh, uh, system into the blockchain, ended up costing a fortune, and it was a failure. So there's going to be these, you know, things that don't work out that well. Right, but I do believe that in the future there is some sort of merit to this type of technology. Just how it manifests is uh, beyond my intelligence, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, thank you for sharing yeah. that. Very well said. I learned a lot there. Yeah, no worries. Also, All right. the dashboard's working now. Uh, thank you, Live Trading at Trader TV slash Ramin and Fabian. So Thanks. now we have that dashboard working. Um, also, I can't believe there's only three minutes left. Time flies when you were having fun when the markets are as wild as they've been. I didn't ask you what you're doing this weekend. I don't even know. <laughs> that face you just made. Like, arr, arr. I, I want to write. I want to write. Right. I'm going to write this weekend for I sure. I was going to ask you that, obviously. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate that. Might do some reading. Going to go on some walks, weather pending. Uh, oh, it gets I guess. a little cold tomorrow. It dips down. We get like that big, you know how it is. Cold yeah. spells and then we pump right back up. Then Sunday is supposed to be a bit better. Maybe, maybe I'll wait for Sunday for that then. It's raining all Saturday and Sunday. Thank you for being the bearer of good news, Ram Ram. Fantastic, thank you. Yeah, she's <laughs> you're welcome. She is like not at all phased by that. What are your plans for the weekend? Nothing. I just want to let uh, I want to let Neil know that Intel is down four and a third percent. That's what I want to do right now. I'm gonna let my man Neil know that Intel down four and a third, well below AMD, well above Micron, well below Taiwan Semi. I'm so sorry for you, Neil, but Intel is absolutely in a full state of tank, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's real. Nobody asked you what it is. <laughs> he said nobody asked, but you know, 
freedom of speech, I guess, right? I like that that's what you're doing your weekend is crashing <laughs> intel, apparently. Um, that's pretty funny. Everybody knows that, like, uh, Neil and I are obviously friends, and then we're just joking, right? Yeah, so. yeah, and all jokes, although some people do agree. Has some, some random guy, that's his name in the chat, I love that, saying INTC is trash. I don't think it was earlier ScarJo Rabbit, I think, saying... Is, Neil's is, gonna get him. He's gonna get him in the chat. <laughs> no, I remember someone was saying, um, I think it was ScarJo Rabbit earlier, saying, what's hot trash? Is it worse than cold trash? I thought that was I pretty know, funny. Right? Yeah, I know, right? I know. Hot trash that, does smell worse than cold trash. Have you ever smelled trash okay, on, yeah, a you're right. day, on a like, hot day? I just had a sense memory. Yeah, definitely. Some oh. like pineapples on pizza, some don't. Some like Intel, some don't, says Ram Ram. Truer words have never been spoken on this show. Shout out to Ram Ram. And uh, I'm so sorry for you, Neil. We're, I'm loving the, the Ram Ram cameos, the Ramios, if you will, today. Rumi killing it in the chat and we're whispering stuff in our ear. She's saying world peace as well now here, um, uh. says Ramin. So much appreciated. I hope we had a, everyone had a fun midday here because, I mean, I sure as heck did. I had a fantastic I just a crazy, time. Crazy I'm time. right on the day, but I had a fantastic time. Definitely not a shellacking like we took yesterday, but that's why you show up every day and you put on the trades. You hope to get a little bit better every day. Thank you for saying that. And I, yep. I'm also, I'm red, I'm very red yep. on the day, but I had some good trades and I think I learned a little bit with every trade and I'm trying to be a little bit, uh, you know, proud of myself. And good. I like all this, this meme as well. You know what? We have about, uh, how many seconds left here do we have? We Ten. have about 45 seconds. I'm going to leave you with live trading by Trader TV slash Ramin saying, hashtag Ram Ram chart chart for president. <laughs> <laughs> but we will see you next week with a whole new lesson. Same bad time, same bad channel. For now though, we're going to see Brendo and Sean at the big desk. Uh, that is definitely not me, but um, all right. Yeah, that's back on. Done? If anybody was what looking for that, uh, we were doing some upgrades today on the second stream. So we're going to bring you even more content because we have nothing else more, to do around More here, Trader so. TV Live is going to be more. More. Even more. More, more than No, more. it's actually on the, it's going to be on the main channel, but we'll get to that. Does that mean it's, greater than Trader TV Live? Is that what more? Greater than more Trader right. TV Live? Greater than more than? I don't know. How's your, how's your afternoon going? Bad. How was yours? Uh, you know. No, like, I mean, I was talking 25 to... Celsius in here right now. Yeah, it's not bad. Toasty. Not bad. Well, Ramin always telling us that it's going to be raining all, all yeah. weekend. It's putting sort of a damper on that one. <laughs> but okay, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just here because I said, let's promote the podcast. There's going to be a podcast. We're doing it tonight. Uh, so there's no market recap show, but we'll have a podcast very similar to this. We, I sit here. You sit there. We are building. Sharif keeps mentioning about the secret room. Not I guess so much not, a secret, if not you a secret measure. anymore, <laughs> uh, but we're going to change the format of the podcast, a bit. and we just want to thank everybody for continuing to support it. Uh, as you know, we had record viewership last week, and we'll see if we can uh, rinse and repeat again here, and uh, that's that.